Oh my god. Calm down, Japanese train. You can't be talking like that. Ugh, so how's everybody doing this morning? This morning. This mo remote, remote morning. Malcolm Mood, thank you for the nine. Ben Cap 98, thank you for the nine. Hey, Joseph. Girlfriend and I live in D.C. Thinking about maybe buying a home in Maryland in a couple years after we get married and all that. Any places you recommend or don't recommend? D.C. Um, <laughs> no, I would... You know, I'm too new to the area, I think, to really recommend anything in, um, in good conscience. But um, so many people I know who, who move from out of the DMV move into D.C. And they're like, I need to buy a house in D.C. Do not do that under any circumstances. <laughs> uh, Prinny Squadron, thank you for the 26. One Schmall Schmeet, thank you for the 10. Federal Bunger Inspector, thank you for the 15. Malcolm Moon, think of the nine. Sub baby? True. Uh, this this name that I can't pronounce because it's not in English. Thank you for the prime. Uh, Adult Warrior, thank you for the five. Talarian101, thank you for the 29. Oh, Talarian101. Um, congratulations, by the way, on uh, <laughs> running the Azazel postcard. Post it? Post it. I don't know why it is. Talarian101, by the way, just a normal guy. I don't have, like, extra connection to this person, but I always notice when their name comes up because of Talaria West. Oh god, that's showing my age there. I, I should have said Talarian Academy, right? That's the card. Not Talaria West, but I'm an old Tron player. Old habits die hard. The Real Kamyar, thank you for the two gifties. I appreciate it. Laura Memories, thank you for the four. Durgius, thank you for the 25. We don't have a sub sound for gifties, so I'll just do it right now. Look at those tutters! <laughs> there you go. How's that? MD is expensive to live in, especially near DC. Yeah, it's like the closer you get to DC, the uh, the more expensive you get. Right now, I'm about an hour from DC, which I, I think I like, because it means if there's ever a nuclear conflict in DC, I think I would die of radiation poisoning, not in the initial blast, which is, that's where I want to be. You know... I can have sex maybe twice before, you know, my limbs start falling off. Hmm. Yuri Artillery. Thank you for the sub. I'm getting married. My wife is en route. Oh, wow. I hope that's true. Congratulations. That's a power couple. You going to be doing some medicine today? You know it. You know it. You know it. Are you having a... You you people are, are British, right? Do you have, like... Are you doing the British equivalent of going down to the courthouse? If there's a nuclear conflict in D.C., I'm dying a week before you do. <laughs> it's very true. Very true. Well, it depends on where they hit D.C., you know. No, it doesn't. It's a small city. Lesbians online talking about my wife could mean literally anything. True. Very true. <clears throat> We're having a courthouse wedding? That's the way to do it. My wife and I, we had... I mean, I've said this a billion times. Because of COVID, we had a really small wedding the first time. And because of poverty. Uh, and then we got to have a nice little wedding the second time. We had a second one. And it was basically just an excuse for a reception. And I think that's the way to do it. You know, it's frustrating because one of the most effective ways to build wealth is to get married. But in order to have a nice wedding, you need wealth. You know, it's a real catch-22. So I say go to the courthouse, get the bennies, and then in a couple of years have a party with your friends and family. Me, I had to get the Bennies ASAP because when I married Jillian, I, had, I was just starting my YouTube career and I needed insurance. And she knew that. And so she used that to her advantage. She said, oh, well, if you want insurance, you'll have to put out. God Cloak Burmy. Thank you for the great name, by the way. Uh, thank you for the, uh, the sub. If you think about it, the law is just power scaling. True. Hamoud 1800, thank you for the, the Kato as well. 
She always struck me as the sort. Yeah, Jillian's a huge gold digger. Although when we got engaged, I had no gold, so it didn't work. <laughs> My best friend got married a couple of weeks ago, and even on a very tight budget, with a lot of friends and family discounts, it still cost them 10k. Wow, I'm surprised they could do that at all. That's um, that's pretty cheap in the grand scheme of things. I think our first wedding cost us like three thousand dollars, but it's because I mean we literally like, it was COVID. We were doing what we could. We got married at a public beach. No one would host a reception, uh, for obvious reasons. Uh, so we had like a ro we rented out a rooftop on a a building that outside of COVID was a restaurant. It was all done very safe, but it was uh, it was a little it was unfortunate, you know. Um, times were times were weird. My wedding is going to cost me the price of the license and the pizza I'm buying for the witnesses. True. Why are you all talking about fibrous shits? Can you stop rubbing it in my face? Speaking of shits, um, I installed a bidet on my toilet. That was fun. Um, I got to feel like a real handyman, despite the fact that I think a child could have done this. Um, oh, man. Life-changing. Life-changing day one. I was like, oh, I can't go back. I can't shit in, I can't shit in another toilet anymore. It's over. It's like, um, you know those, like, uh, Lovecraft adjacent stories? Oh, my G-Force driver has updated. Where they, like, glimpse something so beautiful they have to immediately kill themselves because they know they'll never experience it again. It's like that, but, you know, uh, just about shitting out of your doo-doo ass. As someone from a country where bidets don't exist, explain the appeal. It cleans your asshole. <laughs> the whole appeal. Me, I spend most of my time on the toilet wiping. But these days... With a bidet, you wipe for maybe 60 seconds tops. Bidets are the skibbity toilets of real toilets. Too cold? It's refreshing for me. I appreciate the cold. You have a dirtier ass than you think you do? I don't think that's true. I was scraping before the bidet. I have spent 10 minutes shitting and 40 minutes wiping. Haven't we all, Spencer? Anyway, if you buy a nice bidet, you can modulate the temperature. I didn't, though, because I'm cheap as fuck. Oh, wiping never cleans your ass enough. This guy. <sighs> Just get in the shower after shitting. How many times a day are you shitting? One? And you're showering every day? I shower, like, maybe once a week. What do you mean, what? No, I'm fucking with you, of course. Uh, that's just a bidet, then. <laughs> Iga Lima Zababa, thank you for the 17. Fat Man 989, thank you for the 15. This guy showers, that's time you could be labbing rescue ace combos. I think about them while I shower. I go, wow, this water reminds me of the water that comes out of a hose when you are a firefighter. I. This isn't a funny bit. I, I'm calling it. Full Body Bidet is a great band name or something? No. The problem with just shower after is if your shower head doesn't detach, you're kind of fucked. Absolutely incorrect. 
So you are correct insofar as you're not going to like osmosis your way into a clean butthole, right? A lot of people, if they shower after going to the bathroom, uh, they just hope that the water will end up in the place where it needs to be. No, you got to you gotta be like on all fours doing the spread eagle to get that asshole clean, right? Oh, hi, Josh. <laughs> Good timing. Appreciate the raid. Oh my god, the golden kappa? Wait a minute. How do two people have the golden kappa? What's going on here? Does everyone have the golden kappa today? What's... No. But like half of you do. Josh's stream got hit with it? What? Wait, you can get into a position where everyone in your stream gets it? It is unlockable and hype train now. Useless. Absolutely useless. I remember one time the golden, the actual factual golden kappa did show up on our stream, but it was a result of the there was a guy who got the golden kappa and literally just went to every single streamer with over one k and was just typing kappa. <laughs> he was like, yeah. All right, well, um, perfect timing, uh, actually, Josh, because I'm basically out of stuff to talk about. Um, well, okay, we'll do we'll do a little bit of freaks. We have we have a little freaks bonus, the the freaks extension, and then uh, we're gonna play some Edison. Uh, did did you know that there's an Edison ladder now? I know, shocking. All right, let's play the Twitter freaks jingle. Twitter freaks. We will watch New Curry Bandits. Don't worry. Um. So, uh, not a ton of them. Real quick, I do want to do this one. This one is not staying up for more than 30 seconds. Um, ooh, wrong wrong, uh, wrong capture. There we go. Uh, so, this guy uh, posted a banger of a tweet about Israel-Palestine. It said, Nobody said on 9-11, America must retaliate proportionally. Both sides need to show restraint. Where's ba -ba 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 -ba? Let's try to de-escalate. Yeah, maybe they should have, you dumb fuck. You stupid moron. All right. Okay, that's that's going down. I, I really just don't want to... I don't want to have this on my... <laughs> Also, a lot of people did. They were just ignored. All right, let's pull up the freaks. Got some good ones this morning. I think they are... Uh, I think you're going to like them. Uh, they are actually almost all cheery. All right, here we go. First up, this comes from friends of the channel, Joseph Biden. Biden campaign joins Trump's Truth Social platform. If you've ever heard of Truth Social, it's like Twitter, except worse, which is pretty much every uh, alt anti-Twitter website. Let's look at the reasoning. President's re-election campaign joins right-wing social media platform, mostly because we thought it would be very funny. I'm happy to announce that I'm working for this campaign. This seems like something I would do. This is like, yo, you know, it would be very, very hilarious. I mean, I, he's not wrong. I wish he would. Mm. Oh, we got to get him to do more stuff for the bit and less just stuff in general. Next up. This comes from the Sigma female, a banger account. Uh, it's the new YouTube ad blocker is the image. And then it says, this is a, a green text. They took everything from you, IRL, and forced you to retreat into escapism. Now they also want to take escapism from you. What's their end game exactly? I love that everyone on uh, 4chan talks like they're fucking solid snake. It's amazing. Uh, what's the end game of YouTube to make money? What did you think? <laughs> also, they took everything from you, IRL. There's nothing left for me in the real world. The only thing I can do is escape into the <laughs> catalog of Mr. Beast videos. Now that's been stolen from me by forcing me to watch an ad beforehand for Mr. Beast's feastable bars. This just reminds me of all of the... um. Do you remember at the start of Gamergate, people were writing like screeds that were like, they targeted game... Let me actually see if I can find they targeted gamers. 
And one of my favorite, one of my favorite copy pastas of all time. It's so long. I didn't realize they targeted gamers. Gamers. We're a group of people who will sit for hours, days, even weeks on end performing some of the hardest, most mentally demanding tasks over and over on, on for nothing more than a little digital token saying we did. Uh, skip all this. Gamers are competitive, com competitive, hardcore by nature. We love a challenge. The worst thing you did in this was to challenge us. You're not special. You're not original. You're not the first. Semicolon. This is just another boss fight. That's how I feel about this. Next up. The truest words to cross da Daisy's lips, the truest Fujoshi warrior, is a simple and plaintive cry for Yaoi. This is not what she says when she dies. Click it. If you insist. All right, next up. While we're talking about video games, let's talk about the King Kong game. So if you're unfamiliar, uh, what's it called? Like Kong, Skull Island, some permutation of those words. It's a new video game uh, that has come out in the year of our Lord, 2023. Uh, the Rise of Kong, Skull Island Rise of Kong. All right, so let's, let's watch a little footage of Skull Island Rise of Kong. Again, came out it came out this year like 30 minutes ago. All right, here we go. This is a cut scene. Okay, so clearly a banger, but let's let's watch his fur. Yep, not good. Uh, and then watch it cut back to the the uh, the animal here. That's right. It is just a photograph of the animal. We didn't animate it. We just threw in a photo. This is uh, clearly not finished, but I think we're good. I don't think we need to finish this. Uh, here is another cutscene. This one's a little longer. We got to play this game. This looks so fucking peak. Oh, man. This looks so good. Uh, I will say, however, I saw a tweet that I really liked that was like, what happened to all those people who said I want worse games with worse graphics, huh? All talking shit on King Kong game. Is it better than Gollum? It couldn't possibly be better than Gollum. Next up. This one's about Halloween. My three-year-old doesn't understand the concept of Halloween. He keeps dragging our skeletons inside to play with them. I told him it didn't make sense to have Halloween decorations inside because no one can see them. And he said extremely seriously, they're part of our family. Uh, this is the cutest shit ever. But there is cuter shit in the next one. When my boys were five and three, they took our skeleton and they buckled him into the middle seat of our car. They named him Skeletoni, and he rode around with us until Thanksgiving. And we've got another person whose kids have done the same thing. Ours are named Skelly and Susie, and he made them necklaces and he takes baths with them. This is adorable. This is so good. <laughs> Ah, the old skeleton family. The bony brigade. All right, last one. Timeline of sleep? Whoa, Mr. Krabs walking normally compilation be upon ye. I lost me bed. <laughs> I thought you said SpongeBob was dead. Let's get out of this death trap. Why did it make that noise? That last one almost made sense because you see he's got a little bandage on it, but oh my god, I don't want to see this at all. Ugh. Uh, 
I love that this implies he walks weirdly as a bit. He's doing a silly walk. These are all season one episodes. So you would think these are all season one episodes and they change it. But the person actually reveals they only looked at season one because they didn't want to look at 10,000 episodes to find all the ones where Krabs walks normally. Uh, the first one to me is the most egregious. Unfortunately, because this comes from the episode Pickles, I can do the entire episode afterwards. Mr. Krabs, hello. Do you how do? All right, no, we're not going to do it. Or will we? Pickles full episode. Let's find that. Yeah, here it is. Oh, we don't have it. The pickles should be right where they always are. All right, well, we're not going to find it. What's this recommended? Uh, this is a normal recommended. What's that fourth bit vid? It probably, probably break core. It literally is. Told you, I got it in one. New Just a Cat with a Mustache video. All right, we're watching Curry Bandits. Age of old. All right. So, this video is just a little too long. Folks, remember, we are, we are not just watching the video today. We are clicking the pinned link, mods, and we are subscribing to the Curry Bandits. We are going to the comments section, and we are... Replying with, uh, what do we want to reply with? Why didn't you talk about Watts? That's what we're replying with. Why didn't you talk about Watts? All right, here we go. October 20th. This set introduces some of the strongest new engines and staples to the game that completely change how some decks are played. Welcome to a new age of the Yu-Gi-Oh! trading card game. Age! Here's... Ooh! This intro is going hard. I really appreciate this Undertale fan game music. This is, this is the sound that plays when Papyrus goes, Ah! You fucking asshole! You killed all my friends! No! The mod is called Papyrus Broken Bones. That's it. That's his house. Mr. Joshua Smith. Did we watch this on Joshua Smith's channel, by the way? For those of you who came. Did I win something? My sources tell me you've been calling the curry bandits the crappy bandits. So? I take these things personally, Josh. Get lost. Sure. Oh, good. Just watch my video, subscribe, and I'll go. Is it Phoenix Cloud? I've spent millions of hours improving my editing to tell you everything you need to know. You're psycho! Oh, he's going in. He's going in. Josh, Cameo. you get to watch my best video ever, and all I want is your honest opinion. Funny. Really? You're not just saying that because I'm kneeling on your spine? No, no, I shouldn't have called you a dumbass, man. I'm sorry, Jack. Oh, well, I'm I have to actually close out Master Duel. Really? No. 
Diabelle Star the Black Witch can summon herself by pitching a card from hand or field, sets a sinful spoil spell or trap from deck on summon, and if she's sent to the graveyard during the opponent's turn, can pitch a card to summon herself again. Wanted. Seeker of Sinful Spoil. All right, Searches so these are the Diabelle cards I'm the most excited about, obviously. Turn a sinful spoil to the bottom of the deck and draw a card. Arciella makes a level 7 spell cast you control unaffected by monster effects. Well, I didn't realize she had a scythe. Phase and slifers all of your opponent's monsters. Yes, I am abbreviating this. Slifers, slifer, your opponent's you monsters. And Silvera pitches a Diabelle Star from hand or field to negate a face-up card. And if your opponent responds to the activation of a Diabelle Star or sinful spoil, can banish itself to negate that effect. Snake Eye Ash is a level 1 pi- what? There's other monsters in here? Pyro that surges a level 1 fire monster on summon and can send itself and another face up card to summon a snake eye from deck. Oak okay. Comes back or reborns a level 1 fire from graveyard or banished on summon and has the same effect to summon a snake eye from deck. Birch okay. Hilton summons itself if you control a fire and sends itself and another face up as a quick effect this time to summon a snake eye. And Snake okay. Eye's Flam Burge Dragon can push a monster from field or graveyard into the back row. Quick effect, pull a monster out of the back row to your field, and if it's sent to the graveyard, reborns two level one fire monsters. These cards don't do anything! The field spell Divine Temple of the Snake Eye places a Snake Eye from hand, deck, or graveyard on activation, and if your opponent summons a monster, can pull a monster out of the back row to your field. Original Sinful Spoil Snake Eye sends another face-up card to the graveyard to summon any level 1 fire monster from deck, and can banish itself from graveyard to search a level 1 fire and put a Snake Eye or Diabell Star from grave on the bottom of the Interesting. deck. Interesting. Finally, Startling Stare of the Snake Eyes can activate if you control Snake Eye monsters whose total levels are 2 or more, and either pushes a monster from your opponent's field or graveyard to the back row, or summons a monster from the back row of the field. In the OCG, Diabell Stars become a viable engine that existing decks can use to start their plays or add extra interruptions if they've already drawn a starter. Most notably, this engine has carried Rescue Ace to the top of the charts since original Rescue Ace Sweep. Can summon Rescue Ace Hydra. Right, this is deck. not going to be replicated in the Stars, TCG. Three Hunter Fiend, and at least a copy or two of Snake Eye. This deck gets a huge boost to consistency while also having the ability to pivot towards other plays like using Infernoble Knight Ricciardetto, a level one fire two. Oh God, they're not really playing Ricardetto, are they? It is, wait, actually, he's right. It is Rich Ardetto. Fuck. Tuner to extend with the deck's fire warrior monsters and make big negating synchros like Baron de Fleur that can short. We were testing junk or, or uh, in addition what's to starting his name? combos, the effects of the Jet Synchron, in the but I think that's cool. Plays giving you a search for another hydrant and a draw on turn three while also recycling your Diabell Star combo pieces. Many other decks have been using similar Diabell Star engines for various combo starting purposes like Vanquish Soul, Orcus, and Evolzar, and also something something Jet Synchron, something something Chaos Ruler, something something Tiaraman's strongest. Snake Eye is a deck, is yeah, I mean, that has some strengths that could be leveraged in future support. Ash has the the full suite of search options original sinful spoil has and then some like Kurikara, having multiple cards that oh god Kurikara, strong and a boss monster that floats into two reborns let's i'm ready to see what you've cooked quantal quantal you always say that you say watch what i've cooked and then you send me a rescue ace uh deck list and you're like you don't understand we're playing one cosmic cyclone main and i'm like oh my god Whoa, careful there, Gordon Ramsay. Problem is there just isn't much payoff. Their only archetypal interruption is their unsearchable yeah. trap. All the other quick effects accomplish very little aside from building up resources. And they have the sort of crystal beast problem where their back row is all good, but their monsters lack the ability to search them. So the whole thing feels rather disjointed. If the big dragon's effect had swapped speeds, maybe there'd be something there, but instead he's just slow okay. removal and quick I I'm fine and with this being like an incredibly powerful engine with no payoff. Towards, so we're more than likely to wave two, wave two. Future, along with new sinful sports. That could okay, listen, I know I speak for everyone when I say we don't want Diabelle Star lore cards. We want more Vsauce lore. Yeah! Could give the engine even more potential functions. So, let me set the scene. so I work at an airport, right? Tough hours, 2 p.m. to 10.30. So when the horse cards were revealed, I just gotten off of a hard early summer shift, loading planes going up fucking Orlando and sh It is so funny, by the way, that Jaxel works uh, as a, a, a plane loader. Uh, I would not trust this man um, with uh, the plane. Uh, and he also takes photos of a bunch of packages that get sent on planes. I'm like, how is he not fired? Shit. Cracker Barrel had just gone woke. It was a tough day. And Oh, God. What do I open Discord to but six cards, each with nearly a dozen line of text? Hey, look, a typo. So in my weak-minded state, I decided I didn't feel like reading the cards right now. I'll read them when I get back to the parking lot. But then I got to my car and drove home thinking I'll just read them when I get home. And then I got home and I went to bed thinking I'll just read them in the morning. It has been three months and I have not read the Horus cards. So this begins a segment I'd like to call Inside the Mind of a Curry Bandits Viewer, in which I'll tell you what the cards do, not based on any actual fact, but on the things I've heard in passing about this the cards. This bit is too long. Wouldn't be a Curry them. Bandits video. I think this one mills four. That's, that's pretty cool. 
The rest of them summon themselves. They make rank eights by giant trainer. That's true. You can play them in anything. They are really broken. Okay, I'll go read the fucking horse cards. All yeah, good, because they're terrible. To summon themselves, or you control King Sarcophagus. Imseti pitches itself on another card to search Sarcophagus and draw a card. And if your opponent removes another card you control, can send a card on the field to the graveyard. Duamutef gains 1,200 for each horse you control. And if your opponent removes one of your other cards, can draw one. That's not Duamutef. Name in your main monster zones. Happy monkey. Same time, he returns two cards from graveyard. That wasn't Duamutef. And Kebasenyuf applies an effect. Oh, wait, yes, it was. Monsters are targetable <laughs> for the turn. King Sarcophagus makes all your horse monsters into destructible eye effects that don't target them. Ah, I see what you did there. And up to four times per turn can pitch a card from hand to mill Horus Monster. Also, if a Horus Monster battles, you can send the opponent's monster at the start of the damage step. Canopic Protector resets itself if it's sent from the hand or field to the graveyard, and when your opponent activates a card or effect, can summon a Horus Monster from hand or graveyard, but only once per each name. So first thing of note is these have nothing to do with Horus the Black Flame Dragon. Boo! Be sure For now. Is just, For now. You know, a fan favorite old school it Doesn't the second wave effect. actually have something Honestly, to do with it? aged quite well if you build support around it. Literal DM era cover card. Well, I'm the pretty right honestly, there. I'm These pretty happy that the spell negator isn't sorts of going to be a part of this format. Up cards from their hand and playing out of the graveyard in exchange for your entire opener, you can get four large eight star bodies that come back for free every turn. The payoff for even just milling two can be an extra interruption like Hope Harbinger, protection for hand traps like Photon Lord and Hieratic Sky Dragon, or a huge extender for graveyard decks. Like Hieratic Sky Zombie Dragon. Vampire. I got beat by that on and Master Duel yesterday. Three, you can use your three bodies to make Coach King Giant Trainer. They to made draw three Sky. Cards it was a rank eight turbo deck that made Sky Dragon pre. Generic nature and why uh, payoffs. The OCG is kind of throwing these guys everywhere from on in order to, to protect Lament it from imperm. What the fuck is super heavy Horus Chimera? I swear, Road of the King must be just running bits some days. TG. Okay, uh, we, we're skipping on from this one, but I, I, th I, whew. rare miss from Curry Bandits. I think um, the more interesting thing to talk about with regards to these cards is the fact that while they were expected to be so powerful that you would play them in everything in practice they're actually almost unplayable um in the interest of algorithm bumping uh we spent a long time me and rebecca trying to figure out something to play horace in and that's how we ended up on that therion list and the unfortunate truth is there just isn't anything particularly good um like like jaxel said their their best application is probably in tier limit, uh but it's not like fantastic so uh sometimes you open a hand in tier limit if you're playing the destiny hero package that includes malicious and you think oh god if only i had a way to put this malicious in the graveyard and king sarcophagus does resolve that problem right so it does do something for tier limit with respect to that but it doesn't do anything else for the strategy really like they're decent random mills but you have to have king sarcophagus and if you don't have king sarcophagus it doesn't do jack fucking shit um, like if you open King Sarcophagus and mill them, then you can get to Giant Trainer, but you're doing that in a position where you already have access to a significant amount of mills, um, or you're doing it by minusing your entire hand, which puts you like dead to imperm the Giant Trainer, which is like really not where you want to be, uh, in a deck that has such an unbelievable fluidity through hand traps. Imseti solves the problem to a degree, but it now opens up the deck to lose to Ash Blossom, whereas previously it really... Uh, one of its big strengths is that um, individual one-for-one -one cards weren't particularly good in them. Uh, and finally, people are like, oh, you can use them to get to zombie vampire and, like, start your mills. Which is true, but I really don't feel comfortable zombie vampiring. I, I just, um... Uh, this is, I feel, not the format that you want to be zombie vampiring in. Like, maybe you can get your plays started, but four is not five, you know? Uh, sometimes you'll whiff, or you won't hit enough names in order to do anything interesting. Uh, and if that happens, and you've given your unchained opponent, like a Sharvara to work with, or a Shayama, your rescue ace opponent just names in grave that really unlocks almost any hand, god forbid you're playing the mirror and your tier limit opponent just stunts on you epic style. Um, so, it's interesting. I do want to say, um, that thing I mentioned at the beginning where it gets bricks out of your hand... I think that that is important enough that some people, especially the first weekend of uh, Agov format, which is going to be at Indy, will experiment with the deck. I think Jojo ASMR posted like a, a list that did well at a pretty competitive local that's playing the horse stuff. Uh, so I wouldn't be surprised to see it show up. But I don't think it's going to be played in everything. And I think there is an argument you don't even play it in tier limit. And I think that argument's pretty compelling to me. I would, 
I'm interested in seeing how it develops for sure. Um, I will say personally, uh, we tested the Horus tier deck a lot uh, for TMT and it just wasn't panning out. It's just like hands did not look as good as they did without it. Rocket Salamanders, a level 1 Fire Pyro that contribute a TG to summon a different <sighs> TG from deck. And if you control a machine TG... I think Horus is a deck that looks worse in testing than in tournament. What does that mean? Nah, I'm feeling curious. What what does that mean? You mentioning JoJo was like an Infinity War crossover. JoJo, okay. I know JoJo ASMR has an ASMR channel. He is personally like an insanely good duelist. He is so good at Yu-Gi-Oh. Like legitimately, it's just like a hobby of his that he's insanely good at. Oh, we just said that and left. God. Usually it's getting him to shut up. That's the trick. You can reborn a level four lower TG. TG all clear makes all your TG's machines, gives you an extra normal of a TG, and can pop this a This deck is field to search a different interesting. Limit or removal discards a card to search two TG's. And what was the ratio you tested with? Three M Seti, one happy? No, we were playing a lot of them. Because you want to be able to summon them all from graveyard. Banished. TG Mighty Striker. I think it was two Synchro Tuner that searches a TG back row on summon. Quick Synchros. It was three three one one one. a TG card. Over Dragon our soul charges for TG's on summon, and if it's pop, draws a card. And finally, TG Glaive. Blaster can banish an extra deck monster as a quick effect, but only once per turn for each synchro monster used for its summon. And once per turn, if a monster is banished, you can summon that monster to your field. These cards really laven up TG's playstyle. Before he starts talking about TG, I'll just give you my thoughts. We'll do the TG 10 minute testing for sure. The deck's not great. Um, it, it's like a synchro combo deck, but it requires you to commit at really frustrating portions of the combo. And while the starters are really good, there's not like a lot you can accomplish with them. And investing a lot of material into the boards uh, feels really bad because the boards don't contest opponents' boards. And God forbid your opponent went first and has something to interact with you. It feels like bad monodium to me. Giving them some actual decent starter cards and huge buffs to consistency. Starting from just Rocket Salamander, which is searchable with all clear, limiter, and original <clears throat> sinful spoils. You could summon Screw Serpent from deck, Reborn the Salamander, and make Over Dragon Arm. And bring both its material back, putting all three material for Trident Launcher on board. But to resolve it, you need a TG in hand, so yeah, not quite a one-card combo. Limiter Searching 2 does fulfill that requirement, though, so we've got that going for us. You also now get an actual payoff. TG's old bosses were honestly not very good at anything. No, Meanwhile, Glaive Albert. Blaster is pretty good at one thing. Two Banishes, one of which becomes a Steel, is kind of cool, but only working on extra deck monsters is kind of limiting. Not gonna be many targets in the Labyrinth matchup, I reckon. Flows is better, but not always an option when you might need to use Mighty Striker Search to extend. Milling and resetting it is an option, but to do that, you have to banish the synchro you control and i'm gonna be honest with you making the first synchro costs so damn much that making a second one that probably doesn't fucking do anything because you're yeah. locking tgs isn't gonna 100 be percent correct so here. where's that leave us i'd say a fun reasonably consistent deck that puts up a pretty unique piece of interruption that might not always cut it fuck we're valance all the <laughs> pendulums have a bunch of words and okay mm. this part of the video i think i like the best but the one thing that he doesn't really talk about, which I think doesn't need to be talked about because it's almost intuitive, is that Lightworm and the the guy on the left, fucking uh, uh, Pendulum, his name is like Mr. Pendulum Magician, are crazy good in Pendulum Slop. They are great in the slop. They are perfect for slop. Like, this card on the left almost reads like a custom for the slop archetype if it was an archetype. And I keep forgetting what they do. Moreover, you don't need to know what any of this shit does, but I can't skip over them because think of little Timmy, whose opponent is going to say that Supreme King Gate Magician mills for cost, and he doesn't know any better. He's just gonna say, oh, okay. It's my job to tell you he's lying, Timmy. You can ash that. I won't let you down, Timmy. So that stock photo is crazy. They, they're playing two-pronged attack in the monster zone. Supreme King Gate Magician protects Zark from being banished. That's a rare protection. While it's in the scale, and can pop itself to scale a Supreme King Gate from deck. As a monster, it can summon itself from hand by milling a Pendulum Xyz Synchro or Fusion Dragon from deck or extra deck, and searches a card that mentions Zark on summon. Supreme King Dragon Lightworm summons itself out of the scale if a monster is summoned by... This card's unbelievable. Zark, you can copy the attribute and level of a monster you control. And on summon, can fish a Gate or Dragon out of the extra, then immediately Synchro or Xyz summon a Supreme King Dragon. Pendulum 
Pendulum Evolution is a continuous spell that trades Hilarious a card. hand for a Pendulum of 2,500 from deck, and if you summon an extra deck Pendulum Monster, gives you an extra Pendulum Summon that turn. This effect that doesn't matter mentions Zark. Wings of Light searches. We got to think of a name for this effect, by the way. The effect that does nothing but mentions a card, so you can search it with the card that says card that mentions X. It's like... There's a bunch of branded cards like that. There's a bunch of Crimson Dragon cards like that. There's Zark cards like that. What are we calling this? Pre-prep? Fine. We'll call it the pre-prep clause. The pre-prep effect. Shout out? Oh, but shouts out is so much better. Let's do shouts out. <laughs> yeah, and it shouts out Zark so you can search it. I, we're, I'm going to do shouts out. The Supreme King or summons it if you control Zark. Miracle of the Supreme King has three effects if you control Zark. Either pop it and summon it. There's a ton of these in DM too. Zark, move yeah, I have to extra Tamias. Extra PNG. Pendulum, That's not a shout out. You're a clout chaser. Deck. Soul of the Supreme Celestial King tributes a spellcaster pen to fusion summon Zark by banishing the materials from anywhere. Exceed the pendulum yep. adds a pen from extra to hand on summon. Oh yeah, this isn't part of Zark, but it's in the set for some reason. And can quick effect summon a pen from hand or graveyard of a level you could pendulum summon. And finally, Odd Eye's Arc Ray Dragon is always treated as Zark, can be summoned by tributing a regular Zark you control, sets any scale from deck on summon, goes to the pen zone when it's destroyed, and can shuffle back the other card in your pen zone to resummon itself. <laughs> This card is just like, they really are like, how much text can we print on a card that is going to be bad? How long can we make a bad card? Shouts out to Simple Flips. Yeah, by the way, I'm an occasional Simple Flips enjoyer. I'll tell you that right now. That person who went into Simple Flips chat and told him, oh, MBT knows you. Um, d don't do that. For people that I like and respect, I don't want them to know of my existence. I want it to be a one-way parasocial street. Uh, but Simple Flips lost like 400 pounds. What the fuck? He's so skinny now. It doesn't look right. Congrats to him, but <sighs> it's going to take some getting used to. All right, while well, the neurons in my brain are still properly aligned and the text of all these cards is still floating around in my brain, let's go over some of the new interactions to worry about in the new Zark-centric Pendulum deck. For one thing, Soul of the Supreme Celestial King is a strong new interruption to build around, summoning Zark whenever you yeah. want to wipe the board. Gate Magician yeah. is also a good piece of that equation as the yes. search for Soul that also fulfills its cost. Wings of Light boosts the consistency of opening Gate Magician while Card's also giving you better access to Light Worm, another potential interruption as it can chill on the scale until you've summoned Zark and hop out if your opponent continues comboing, then yep. uses its effect to copy Dark Worm's attribute and make Evil Clear Wing to wipe their front row. Miracle and Evolution. Evil Clear Wing. Amazing. Evolution are okay too, if perhaps a bit win more. Popping Zark with Miracle will push it into your scale where it can use its two crazy strong floodgate effects, and trading it for Light Zark will let you set whatever other crazy scale you have waiting in the deck, like Five Rainbow Magician or Mizayah. Evolution is another search for gate. Please don't tell me we're going to start unironically playing Messiah. Magician or Astrograph, Pendulum Summoning a second time is fun, and maybe will help you manage tricky combo lines that need to use the Pendulum Summon early, like to clear out Beyond's Restriction. It's funny that they were like, they started printing the Beyond Restriction on a bunch of cards because they were like, okay, this will resolve the way Pendulum works, and they were like, and now you can Pendulum twice! But it feels mostly like a gimmick to me. Yep. Exceed the Spider-Verse, on the other hand, has far broader applications than just Zark decks, taking inspiration from some of the best I don't like this woman. Electromite, and probably she breasts a little too boobily for my taste. Now. On the other hand, we have the cover card, Arc Ray Dragon. Odd Eyes Arc Ray Dragon? Okay, so like I want to tell Doug he's stupid and shouldn't on have pronounced hand, it like that, but look the at the card. card Arc Ray Dragon. Odd Eyes it's one word, Arcray. Odd eyes, why are you arcing cray cray? It's not good. The Arcray Dragon? Ar is that a word? I don't even know what that is. This card carries on the legacy of Charles the Great being a free tag out from an existing boss monster and thus a strict upgrade, but. Well, his effect to grab a scale out of deck is extremely versatile, but if your plan is to go first and set up the trap card to summon Zark on your opponent's turn, then that means they expect you to summon Light Zark on turn 3, at which point you've already wiped your opponent's field on their turn and probably have game on board. Unlike Charles, Yikes. who try to make turn 1 and immediately improve Yeah, they put Charlemagne in the game, Oriana. He's Charles. great, too. Light Zark's potential to be useful is kind of come and passed by the time you can make him. Kind of odd place for him to be in. Arguable yeah. whether he's even worth the slot despite being free to summon if you get Zark. <laughs> Really At least weird. if you play Miracle as an alternative search target for Gate Magician, he can serve a purpose as the big guy to summon. Yep. Xyz Armor Torpedoes. I think he talked about it and I just wasn't listening, but it's in this weird position where like, 
it gets you the cards you need, but you can only access it in a world where you already have the cards you need. So it's like a consistency tool that's in the wrong point in the combo. There's like a lot of these these days where it's like, if this card could be accessed halfway through the combo instead of at the end of it, it'd be crazy. But unfortunately, it does pretty much nothing. Glad we, we're spending time on armor disease. I see no hype for these cards, despite the fact that I think they're crazy. A generic rank three that can detach two materials to draw a card, and while it's equipped to a monster, gives it Armades effect and targeting protection. Xyz Armor Fortress can rank up onto any rank three or four, can't be used as a material while it has material, can detach any number of cards to search the same number of armor Xyz cards, and while it's equipped to a monster, gives it double damage. Full armor Dark Knight Lancer, the Dark Lancer. He's for the, the Dark Regionals. Dark. Lancer. Can rank up from a 5 or 6, gains 300 for each material, can add an Xyz card from graveyard back to hand, and when a card is equipped to a monster you control, attaches an opponent's monster to itself. Ex okay, so... Xyz and Trust searches... An oh, we do Xyz have... Okay, hold up. We do have... He has to do the rest of it. And can manage itself to summon an Xyz out of your back row. And Full Armored Xyz is a trap card that just performs any Xyz summon if you control an Xyz monster. It can manage itself from Graveyard to equip an Xyz monster from Graveyard to an Xyz you control to boost its attack and protect it from being destroyed. This series of extra deck up. Okay, so... Um, one thing he doesn't mention here is that um, while it was popular overseas, uh, they had... Um, uh, a spell card called Armored Xyz, which is really good. Uh, we don't have that card. Um, so theoretically, you can't go from uh, any three-star monster that has an, a, a once-per-turn detach effect to Armored Xyz, detach the Armored Xyz, and the remaining material. Um, but that's okay. <laughs> it's still really good. Options has seen some experimentation in the OCG as an engine designed to turn a spent rank three or four. The spell fucking sucks. It's okay. Fortress, detaching the one material. And its use is, yeah, to get rid of the material. Lancer, which you can trigger for a quick removal. This is best utilized in a deck like Mathmech that has an Xyz that can detach both its materials. So Fortress will only need to search one to get rid of all of its materials. That's correct. Um... But, uh, he'll mention later, the space in the extra is so tight in that Any deck that can make a rank 3 or 4 can use Torpedo or Dugaris as generic enablers for Fortress that can also give you a little plus along the way. But because the payoff is only a single extra disruption that eats up multiple extra deck slots and forces you to play at least one brick, willingly using two materials that could have just been a Cicada King or a Dweller or even just an IP <laughs> isn't the most Dweller is a good point. Time. An IP Rather, and uh, SP format. Like those aforementioned that will natively go through an Xyz that can remove all of its materials like Zodiac, who can use Chaka 9 to revive an Xyz with no materials and turn it into a Carlotta Valdez style facsimile of Dryden't. Or They're not. That's not legal, right? Doesn't it say you can't use it as an Xyz summon? Yeah. Trap Tricks, who can finally use Alamaris for something other than imaginary emergency situations that have never come up in real life, and also interestingly enough, gets to use full armored Xyz as a proactive way to trigger Sarah. But oh, you use the Chalk. I'm not doing that. My opinion, the best home for these cards is... Okay, listen. Just just listen, okay? Just, can you listen for three Wouldn't seconds? Wouldn't be a Curry Fucking Bandits listen, video right? without Almost the Utopia, utopia will go through utopic propaganda. Sacking them Ka off thank utopia, you for the sub. Or having enough extenders to turn him into UDF. He doesn't do much Stove, after think of the sub. set on the field. Where his Get him alone, think of the 19. The Steve Armored the Beast, 52, think of the 24. John Waxerino, think of the 24. Another Jake Show, think of the 15. Also very important. Jane OCG Meta, think of the 3. Weariest Bones, think of the prime. Your attack so they can Zeus away the board. All you got to do is flip full armored while they're still in battle and make your own Zeus first. Shino Baron Shino. That's crazy, by the way. I did not realize you were allowed to do that. Did not know the text on Zeus said uh, that <laughs> if an Xyz monster battled this turn, which means you can quick Xyz into it on your opponent's turn. Board. All you gotta do is flip full armored while they're still in battle and make your own Zeus first. Shino Baron Shade Peacock is treated as Baron. And I can't field, believe this. This motherfucker didn't do Abyss stuff, Actors. Here he is talking about Shino Birds. Shino we Baron do Shade not care. Peacock, as Baroness, searches a spell or trap that mentioned spirit monsters on summon and also comes back after being Shino Baron babies. You know, the Shino Baron Z community is really fucked up that they're not including new Shino Baron support cards that aren't chibi children. And adds a spirit or ritual spell from graveyard or banish back to hand or set stars align across the milky way from deck if you're unfamiliar with stars align it's a card from darkwing blast that has shino birds in the art and is really good in shino bird but they forgot to make it searchable so here we are these cards help make shino bird more i mean this with my whole chest the shino birds are better than abyss play. actors Little abyss Baron actor has top spell, and i really mean this nothing else even remotely interesting which can set <laughs> stars align during the end phase as well as adding back the ritual i doubt shino bird ever gets that tribute over little baron searches even more generically than pre-prep giving you access to not only the 
the Peacocks and Calling, but also Aratama, Amano Iwato, or Incantation Inception. And Stars Align Above the Shrine has a whopping eight rituals to choose from, including the ones you're supposed to summon with it, and also bad cards. For what it's worth, both Conductor and Devotee of Nephthys set you up to summon Sacred Preserver, which can search both Peacocks. Maybe the Nerd Factor bounce, although being comes a little from that. Extremely awkward to summon. And if you're part of the disproportionately large denomination within my audience this matters to, Knight of Armor Dragon can summon Arm Dragon Thunder level 7, which can tag an What the fuck is that ca I've never seen this card! This is real? I can go out and purchase a pack and this card could theoretically be inside it? What the fuck? to level 10, a Dryden. Regardless of the Gen X Blast Van Tier combos, the deck's main go is to set up Stars Align's effect to quickly summon a Peacock <clears> from hand, <throat> bounce either the front or back row, and summon a Mogus Impostus to floodgate away any follow-up plays, which is... Comedy? Fine. I mean, it sounded a lot cooler before that last part, but also clearly not enough. This support ain't gonna be turning any heads competitively, but if you do run into it, I don't know, better have Droll or something, I guess. Vanquish Soul Zhao along summons itself if you reveal a card in hand. This guy. Okay. So I think they already refer to it as this, but we got to start calling this guy and raising the blowjob brothers. It's cost for a vanquished soul, and quick effect reveals either a fire to change something's battle position, or He's two mid. fires. He could be a vanilla, and he'd be cards. fine. Snow Devil can reveal up to one of each VS attribute. Burn for four and summon from hand if you revealed one. Burn for six more and protect your monsters from card effects if you reveal two. And burn for eight more than destroy all monsters on the field if you revealed three. These cards fill a lot of holes in Raisin's ass and Vanquish Soul strategy to really make some of their cards work much better. For starters, Zhao Long is a fire that's searchable with Raisin, meaning that Raisin can fulfill the cost for his own pop effect on his own over the course of you and your opponent's turn without having to play Pluton on each G. The Thank God for that! increases the potency of Stake Your Soul, and their own effects only caring about fires gives you the room to skew your attribute ratio towards okay. fire. Okay, I'll ask. I've never known. What is Stake Your Soul, Your Nose Is Mine from? Is it a Milano video? I guess I did know. Wait, what is... Can someone link me the specific... Oh, it's from a deck profile. What, he just says it? ...without the threat of being punished for only having one attribute in hand. And Raisin having a free effect to reveal just a fire gives you the ability to summon Zhao Long immediately after searching them. Snow Devil asks Hi, why you bring out full strength, but is nonetheless a good alternative search target for Mad Love to go with Dust Devil. Just revealing one with it can solve the occasional issue of not being able to use both of Rock the Vanquisher's effects in one turn. Important to remember that the two effect won't protect Rock of the Vanquisher, so the full power effect will still destroy it because this deck was designed to be frustrating on purpose. Poisson I... Can't imagine playing this. Yeah, the nouvelle can Okay. During this section, see if you can spot Jaxel's high school French. Jaxel is, I think, 16 years old, so it's probably it's probably just going to be French 1. Target a monster to change its battle position and summon itself out of the scale. Searches a level 1 ritual or recipe card or banishes recipes from graveyard to summon a nouvelles from hand on summon and goes back to the scale when it's tributed. Concours de Cuisine summons a Ooh, nouvelle. Ooh, whoa, whoa a buddy, seal, calm down there. Each field, but locks you out of using anything but nouvelle monsters and patisseal monsters of material for the turn and can banish itself to target a monster and give it to an... Oh, we have the video. All right, three, two, one. Duelist! Welcome to a brand new deck profile, guys. Got sex. Shouts out for three, two, one, by the way, and then not cutting it out of the video. I feel so bad for the boy. Okay, where is Stake Your Soul? Your nose is mine in here. Here's the spells. It's got to be in the spells, right? Take your soul, you know what I'm saying? I drew my consistency cards a lot. Luckily, you know what I'm saying? I I drew well with this tournament, so you know, stake your soul. Stake your soul! Your nose is mine, was certainly in my opening hand. <laughs> he just says it? <laughs> oh, man. Wait, but I need to know where it came from. His brain? Off the dome, literally. Milano is the number one guy that I want to just crawl around in his head. I'm like, damn, you an interesting creature. A 
500 attacks. What? How do you not understand radar. that These impulse? These cards force new bells to work whether they want to or not, because in Joe Biden's America, new cards don't want to work anymore. To understand the labor shortage, imagine a hungry burger. If you're unfamiliar <laughs> with the Pat to Seal archetype, it's literally just this one <laughs> random pendulum fusion that they've inexplicably folded into the archetype. You just fold it in. Concourse summoning to both fields gives you access to not only your new searcher for Buria Bays, but also forces your opponent to control a monster you contribute for its effect. On top of that, its effect in the graveyard lets you target new bells for free as a way to trigger its effect, meaning that, yes, you heard me right, as support for the new bells archetype, Konami has printed Indicate. You. Meanwhile, Vanguard Soul gets Pan Glacial Worm. Plus, Onya's effect <laughs> to summon itself also triggers Nouvelles, so by starting with just Concours and either a ritual or recipe, you can get to Balamonia and assemble your full end board. A two card combo starting from an unsearchable spell for a board of like three interruptions is pretty unimpressive, but the wording on Concours implying the possibility of more targets to summon down the line inspires some amount of confidence that there's still hope yet on the horizon for these Francophonic fiends. All right, I'm going to be honest with you. If Konami was courageous in any sort of meaningful capacity, they would have made Paticiel fat. Right? When am I going to get to celebrate frat, Fat Bitch Friday? <laughs> Labyrinth Butler Arias can pitch itself as a quick effect to either summon a Labyrinth Monster from hand or set a normal trap from hand that can be activated this turn, and reborns itself when your opponent responds to your Labyrinth effect or normal trap effect. This card That's the thing. Whenever I see, like, a, a, a celebrity chef, if they're not fat, I just don't buy it, right? It's like, oh, cool. Ooh, you want to... <laughs> you want to give me the recipe for amphetamines? Awesome. Guy Fieri, you can tell he he knows he he's he's experienced the delights of the world. That's why Rachel Ray is the best. Rachel Ray, celebrity chef, got heavy. She should have gotten much more props for that. She's living the life. <laughs> Ramsey eats what? One Wellington a week and calls it? No boost Labyrinth's ability to play on turn zero, turning all your normal traps into hand traps. So going second, a card like Karma I'm timing out the people who have never seen women in chat. If you are anti-Fat Bitch Friday, get the fuck out of this stream. It's to be Nibiru. And a card like Dimensional Barrier hopefully gets to be fucking banned soon. Jesus <laughs> H. Christ. A anyway, yeah. anyway. Going first, Arius turns your welcome. We played, by the way, uh, I played a little bit of this matchup um, uh, with Ava. I was just testing Rescue Ace versus this. Uh, I, I am happy to say this is now an unwinnable matchup for Rescue Ace. <laughs> comes into spells to get your monsters on board earlier, and also gives you the space to hold some of your traps in hand to play around Feather Duster and evenly. If you have, say, Welcome This card is so you annoying. Hold on to the punishment, and when your opponent tries to duster you, you can summon Ariana. It's not the difference Arias maker to drop the punishment for the deck, but it's, when you're ready to use it's it. so this, of course, annoying. This comes at a cost, the inherent minus one of Arias. She has the ability to recur herself, but it's reactive and dependent on your opponent <laughs> taking an action that your own engine restricts them from. Then, of course, there's also the fact that what you can set with Arias is dependent entirely on what you draw. Pairing Arias with Lady lets you set up any normal trap for turn two. But now we're discussing a three card combo in a trap deck for the payoff of Jam yesterday and Jam tomorrow, but never Jam today. It's a good lovely way of going that. for it. Stealing that no phrase. To panic over it. No, Is it's that not from time something? To worry about labyrinth floodgate setups. That comes later. Perfumet, the mythical king of phantom beasts, is really a don't two really really not excited for that card to come out. Some combination of one beast, one fiend, and one illusion. It is from Alice in Wonderland. That's treated as Chimera, mills a Beast Fiend or Illusion on Summon, and can manage itself from Graveyard as a quick effect to summon a Banished Beast Fiend or Illusion. Also okay, so something that he doesn't talk about here that I think is really important is that this guy looks like fucking shit. What's going on in this picture? He's got four arms, but one is coming directly out of his back. But also he's got three arms, but is holding four swords. Terrible looking card. And he's just swinging these willy-nilly like a fucking Crash Bandicoot tornado. He's going to chop his own wings off. Fiend or illusion on summon and can manage its own graveyard as a quick effect to summon a Looks like an AI illusion. drew this fucking also, shit. Relatedly, Master Tao the Chanter reborns an illusion mm. when it's sent to the graveyard. There is nothing it. Why? Oh, why did they put this card in the set at common? Ruined the pre release format. Do not print marshmallows at common for pre release format. Do like that Tao the Chanter uh, looks wrong, like his hand is all fucked up. That's. Uh, we don't get that kind of perspective enough in you. Like, the perspective of this card is fine, but his hand is just drawn like shit. And that's how all the OCG cards used to look. Like, all the cards they're referencing here. Like, clearly it's meant to look like that on purpose. I love it. 
interesting about Tal, aside from the fact that he's the only illusion out of the two new ones, even worth reading. Oh, there's a UFO in here, too. To my locals doesn't do that kind defense, of sneak. Is, oh my God, they hilarious. hate us limited Bird, players. The hand, there is no individual so more pressed than the limited Yu-Gi-Oh! player. Look at how popular Prague is. The children hunger for limited. If you wanted to try and you make me play constructed at sneak. Backjack could be your mill target, and after using it, Burf could loop it back to field from the banished pile. You can beat Tier Unchained by milling End of Anubis to bring back with King of the Phantom Beast. So notably, this is going to be this week's OMO. We're just ripping this off entirely and talking about some really cool things you can do with this card. Uh, but it turns out milling a beast or a fiend is crazy. By using Chimera Fusion on your opponent's turn. Oh, cool! We printed Burf, fusions that have Foolish banished. Burial attached. Chain players ever have to worry about the Chimera matchup? They can use Burf as a super poly target. Now that playoff is over, will birthday charity Sayama. streams return? Yeah, for but sure. This one. You can mill soul scissors. I wanted to do one this year, but the timing didn't work out, and the subathon kind of conflicted. I think oh, okay, okay, I love doing 24-hour birthday streams. I think they're a ton of fun, and usually we end up raising a significant amount of money for a good cause. Um, and also, one 24-hour stream, I can do that. The subathon, I cannot stop. The practical application of this card is pretty much mostly going to be milling Mirror Sword Knight and weird yep. hands that didn't get to go through it, and reviving your banished illusions after they've used the negation effects on your opponent's turn, resetting the resource loop. It does also, however, introduce the Salaman Great problem of having a fusion monster so generic, it becomes a viable super poly target to wipe any board. Yeah. Fabled and super poly is already pretty good against Rescue Ace, so I'm really hoping that this doesn't catch on. Crossfire on that one, by the way. Sorry, Nash. Ken and Gen, the best best is friends, each summon the other to the opponent's field once per turn. Love calling this the Kenjin, by the way. Can return to the hand at the end of the battle phase, and when summoned by the other, Ken gives your opponent a draw two and <sighs> discard one, and Gen makes you discard a card, but reminder, these will be summoned to the opponent's field, so scratch that, reverse it. Beautiful Luke Von Karma reference real quick. Let's talk about Gen, he's holding the stake from, um... What's it called? What are the monsters called? The the fucking oh my god! Curry Kara, no. K. K. Kara Kuri. Wait, they really printed a card called Kuri Kara and Kara Kuri. Okay, yes. He's holding the fan from from uh, the Kuri Kara cards. Um, what is this thing? This is on tactics, this is on thrust. This is some sort of Japanese shit I don't know about. It's like a big, big, like, fucking thing on a stick. What is it? It is a war fan. I'm looking it up. War fan. No. I'm looking at pictures of war fans, and they just look like fans. I'm talking about the one that looks like a steak. What's the thing on tactics talent? Madara Uchicha. That's a, that's a character. Wait. That's not the name of this thing. Gun by. Oh, okay. This is it. Japanese war fan. Fuck. <coughs> it is a specialized fan used by samurai officers to communicate commands to their troops. While they seem a bit gimmicky on the surface, these cards have incredibly strong applications. At the very least, normal summoning Gen and giving your opponent Ken lets you cycle. Let's talk about what Gen is sitting on. What the fuck? Card effect, triggering the additional effects of Dark World monsters relevant not only for pure Dark World, but also for Purely, which gains a new incentive to play the Dark World engine if one brow can convert into two draws. But being treated as an Gage opponent's sending you a goes... message? Where? If he did, it got drowned out by chat. Oh, there it is. Hey, bro, did you see the Edison ladder on DB? We're playing after this, yeah. Deeper than that, because it will enable the Blowjob Brothers' tactics and thrust. Woo! Thrust at full power, because your opponent will control <coughs> a monster. With tactics, you can even take back the Ken and use his ignition effect to give your opponent Gen and force them to discard. This also lets you convert the pair into a rank 3 like Torpedo, giving you another draw and potentially... Force them to Hold up, I just realized that Talent and Thrust are the exact same picture, but from different angles. <laughs> Guard. This also lets you convert the pair into a rank three like torpedo, giving you another draw and potentially the. Full I thought the talents was line. the fan and thrust was Ken someone and using the fan, but he's actually field, using the fan and talents. And unicorn. Life is meaningless and we're all gonna die. I've heard rumblings of the Kenjin being sleeved up in several different decks. Pure. WTF is that torpedo card? Sounds like someone needs to learn everything he needs to know about Age of Overlord. Available now on the Curry Bandits channel. And tier chief among them, with Jesse Cotton even being bold enough to say this. If I had to make a guess, a hypothesis, I would say that 
this deck will show up in I'm, I'm gonna say about a quarter of the decks in top cut of Indy. if you join the discord oh we god do i hope that's not true bet going on the validity of that prediction winner gets a mojo dojo casa house earthbound servant ban balena is a fusion of an earthbound and a dark that searches a quirky earthbound inspired rpg on summon lets mm -hmm. a dark synchro attack directly and if your opponent's monster is destroyed by your earthbound card dings your opponent for that monster's attack so I, he's about to bring it up why did we get the legacy support card that fixes the new wave of support before we got the new wave of support. 1,000 years, Volcasaurus. 10 seasons, Volcasaurus forever and ever. I'm overclocking the bits per second on this because I don't have anything to actually say about Geo Gremlina. Why is that, you ask? The rest of the archetype isn't out yet. Yep. They forgot. Thank God they confirmed a release date for them before I finished this script, but wow, they actually did the meme. They pre-printed it. Yeah, so, um... Fun fact, the uh, the Patreon tier that lets people vote on a TMT once a month, they picked this. And I was like, I'm not going to do it till the new shit is out. You don't want to watch me play just Geo Gremlina. I guess it's worth mentioning that Earthbound Immortals do exist and they're still searchable, but no, actually it isn't. It tied with Watts. Synchro I had an Rumble easy out. A tuner, a level seven or eight Dragon Synchro, and Bailinx is for Crimson That Watt deck, by the way. Let's just say Probably there's a reason the it's not in this Dragon video. Search target, just a no questions asked extender to get the right stars and stat lines back on the field to make more Synchros. Even gets you pretty far along towards making a second Crimson Dragon so that you can tag it out once on each turn. Might Funny. even manage to see some play outside Synchron since it can reborn Ass <laughs> Dragon, giving you the room to use it to make Baron on your turn, while also preserving the option of tagging it out on your opponent's turn. A little bit of protection. Is okay. The Animation Chronicle set had a card that mentioned illusions before illusions were printed, so they pushed the whole set back. Cringe! They should have just printed it like Tarmogoyf and been like, oh, you're going to love this. Hey, not really perfect. Speaking of Tarmogoyf pre-printing, but I think that's great. It both Planeswalkers and Tribal cards. I hear they're getting rid of Tribal cards and magic because of like so cultural sensitivity issues, which is very funny because they should get rid of Tribal cards because it's a stupid fucking idea. It's like a fun thing they could throw in one set. More types should have King. It's like a a keyword. It shouldn't be a super type. In the OCG, this card debuted after Bonfire. Wonder if there's any good targets for that. Bonfire looks like Volcanic and utilize rank four and oh thank god consistency because finally volcanic volcanics have more consistency hand. it's not so big of a deal if they have to burn their normal summon burn banshee she also works great with emperors other way around they're keeping tribal or they're keeping tribal but change the name why tribal is a terrible design print like it's awful it's terrible i don't like it they should get rid of it. And she can mill Emperor Just and get rid of it. one of the banishes to summon it, at which point she'll return to the field. <laughs> She's also the first consistent What is tribal? Okay, so... Ugh, tangent. Uh, in 2007, Wizards of the Coast printed a set called Time Spiral. And the concept of Time Spiral was that... Okay, so there were three sets in Time Spiral. Uh, but one of the concepts in Time Spiral is you had a chance of opening a card from Magic's future. And it had a, a brand new card frame that, you know, theoretically would someday come to manifest and obviously didn't because it looked like shit. Um, but it had like some cards had references to things that didn't exist yet. Um, there was a card that said if a rigor you control would assemble a contraption, it assembles an additional contraption instead. instead. And there was no card that was a contraption. No one knew what assemble meant. Uh, but one of the most interesting was uh, Tarmogoyf, um, which said... This card, uh, individually powerful card, this card gets plus uh, one plus one for each super type of card in the graveyard. And then in parentheses, the super types are land, enchantment, artifact, creature, instant, sorcery, a uh, couple of others maybe. Um, and uh, Planeswalker and Tribal. Now, neither of those types of cards existed yet, but Planeswalkers were a concept. So they released in the next set, Lorwyn, and they were, uh, I mean, it was mixed reception because they were so individually powerful, but uh, I think the general population did like them, and of course they become a mainstay in Magic since. Tribal also released in that set, and what Tribal is, is a super type of card that can give a creature type to a non-creature spell. So... Like Tarfire, for instance, is a tribal instant uh, goblin. So if you have a card that counts the amounts of goblins in your graveyard, it will count that goblin instant. Uh, it, it, and you might notice that this is not interesting enough to base a super type around. It's not fucking artifact, right? Um, but I feel like they felt like they had to do it. 
Oh, Siberian says pick up. Yeah, let me see if I can get this. Hello. Yeah, uh, so first correction, there was actually, uh, so they initially planned to print both planeswalkers and the tribal in future site. Uh, but then the planeswalkers got pushed uh, into the next set. But then to what tribal card in future site? There is a pacifism that's also a rebel. There's what? Uh, look up uh, Bound in Silence. It's from Future Sight. It's a tribal enchantment or a rebel. Oh shit, you're right. Yeah, everyone forgets about that one. So, actually, this is the kind of weird thing. People love tribal. People love to have instant and sorceries and enchantments that also work with the uh, type uh, synergies. Oh! But uh, R&D really fucking hates it because it's so inconsistent. Yeah. Like, uh, they made uh, 15 years of cards with uh, no tribal support, and all of a sudden you have the uh, situation where you have a tar fire, which is a goblin, and a goblin grenade that's not a goblin. And so every time they have do a tribal set, they have to add, uh, they would have added to add uh, uh, this uh, little uh, mechanical tag to uh, a billion cards that uh, had nothing to do with the like just because uh, uh, that uh, the fight spell in Innistrad shows uh, a werewolf in the artwork should that be a tribal sorcery werewolf if they reprint it uh, they can't reprint it to them because uh, then they uh, they either have to change the design in order to make it more werewolfy or being unable to reprint it forevermore which is weird uh, and then uh, uh, you get into all the arguments like, okay, but uh, why is this, uh, why is this a merfolk? Why is this not a merfolk? Why is this a human? Why is this not a human? With humans, it's insane because uh, yeah. obviously it's uh, whatever. And also, they are very fucking stupid to explain on a rules level why they are a type and not a super type. Like, why do they work like a creature and not like a legendary? Hmm. That is. <clears throat> That is a good point. I didn't think of that last one. It is interesting in that I I think that if the hypothetical world where um, Pucci resets the universe and we get to try magic yeah. again and we get to do um, instant as a super type so we ha can have instant sorceries and we implement tribal yeah. from day one, then like it does make a lot of sense to me, but... Uh, yeah, no, it is weird that there's a million cards that are like Goblin X and not Goblins, and then we have Tarfire. I think, uh, realistically, if you went uh, like back to the past Samurai Jack, you should make it so, like, types are... Uh, every type is just there to be a tag that other cards can reference. You shouldn't do, like, the basic land types that uh, grant you the ability to tap for mana. You, shouldn't, you should not do that. You mm -hmm. should not do auras or equipments. Mm -hmm. uh, you should just have uh, uh, like every subtype should just be something that other cards can reference <clears throat> and then it becomes uh, much easier to be like oh yeah this is a source that's also a goblin this is a uh, I don't know a human equipment or uh, whatever this is a uh, a merfolk island stuff like that that yeah. becomes a lot more sensible and you can also do uh, this sorcery is a fire sorcery it works mm -hmm. with fire it's, uh, this is something that they experimented in one of the uh, playlist, playlist products. Uh, uh, but without that, uh, you need the crutch of Tribal to make it uh, work sensibly. And uh, Tribal is a crutch with an unfortunate name that we should probably change. Yeah, also funny that it's named Tribal. <laughs> kind of sidestepping yeah. around this element yeah. of it, but like Tribal, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, the the term that they are using right now, just in R and D, to talk about it, is typol. Typol. But, uh, I expect that typol. T y p a l. No, that's you know, not like tribal, but with type. Yeah, like that's that's clearly something uh, from the, like a development speak. Mm -hmm. If uh, they change the name eventually, uh, we are probably going to get something different because they just reprinted bitter blossom and it still says tribal. So I. Yes, they they are. Uh, this was oh, a last hurrah for tribal. We are not reprinting it for a long time. When we reprint it, it's going to be different. It's going to be called a uh, racial. No, I don't think that's the play chat. <laughs> um, no, we're going to call it um, 
We're gonna call it. This card is always treated as a salamander grade card. We're just gonna print that little reminder text in the uh, in the type box. Please, I, I'm going to die if they do that. All right. Thank you for the the erm. <laughs> actually, that's actually that's, uh, that's actually a lot worse than an artist right now. <laughs> this is very true. This is always treated as an archfiend. Yeah. All right. Bye bye. Yeah. Sure. In 2003, <laughs> this was great. I'm hanging up on them. What a nice young person. It's also, I just realized that Altar of the Goyf exists. I didn't know that that existed. Uh, did MTG ever do anything like printing cards from the future again? That sounds like such a fun concept. No. Um, while Time Spiral was incredibly popular among veterans of the game, um, one set contained cards from the past. Uh, one set contained cards from the present color shifted. So like concepts that like, oh, you know, red cards would always do, but in a blue uh, card. Um uh, psionic bolt for instance and uh, one contained cards from the future they were massively massively devastatingly bad sellers um, casuals didn't know what to do with them uh, it was all the cards were like weird in jokes to magic's history so people who weren't already in on the ground floor felt alienated by them a significant amount of the cards were balanced very poorly because they were set up to work with cards that didn't exist yet um, including Tarmogoyf a really really cool set that they can never ever repeat all right, let's go back uh, because we have clearly just been talking the for no birdsy. reason. Also, we picked up 500 viewers as soon as we stopped talking about Yu-Gi-Oh. Did anyone host me or something? No, people just said we don't want to fucking hear about Yu-Gi-Oh. Because Yu Sea Serpent gains a bit of one minor incidental ways so they can be searchable. <clears throat> Infernal Flame Banshee. Or maybe I'm getting four that attaches one to either search. Oh, I think I'm actually just getting fucked on um Pyro, she summons herself on OBS. Attack. Twitch I'll be the says first it's one consistent. Brave enough to say it. More types should have King of the Feralims. Sea Serpent next. It'll be funny. In the OCG, this card debuted after Bonfire. Wonder this card is so funny, not only meantime, because of what it does, but also because of what it looks like. like it looks like shit. Rank four enablers it's just red. Consistency. Because Volcanic Blaze Accelerator can summon whatever they search from hand, it's not so big of a deal if they have to burn their normal summon. On getting a Banshee, she also works great with Emperor, since she can mill Emperor and then be used as one of the Banishes to summon it, at which point she'll return to the Big field. fire with girl face, yeah. Triggering Agnimal Candle, a pyro tuner that summons itself if you search Agnimal it, Candle, you can shockingly so strong card. Of synchro options. Lastly, unlike Bonfire, she can search Volcanic Queen, a kaiju that eats your normal summon. Card Scanner is a continuous spell that lets it's you a roll a weird card, card by the way. the bottom of both players' decks, and if it's a card of that type, it's added to its owner's hand. Also, if your opponent destroys it, you can make your opponent bottom a card from their hand. In the OCG, Runic cards are laced with fentanyl and therefore put any player who comes into contact with them in a state of delirium in which they accidentally start <laughs> building magic gathering decks. Card scanner Speaking of runic as a means to immediately add back whatever card you place at the bottom of your deck with fountain. Even if your opponent randomly also has a spell in the bottom of their deck and gets a free plus one, guaranteeing you'll have tip in hand every single turn can more than make up for that. I don't recommend this interaction in any runic deck that isn't on a mono main deck, but still a neat concept to learn from. The yeah. moon and Lyria trap isn't Woo! skill drain. That's it. That's that's everything you need to know about this card. We will be playing don't Nemliria. actually need to know, but if I didn't tell you, someone would try to tell you Nemliria is a skill drain now, and they'd be wrong, because none of you could fucking read. We went over. It's a skill drain. Any continuous trap with the possibility of negating monster effects is a skill drain. Over this with Sun Avalon Bloom, we went over... That's a skill drain. Over this with Nordic Shield, I That counts as a skill drain. I bet you we're gonna be doing this forever and ever in circles. Here's a Spongebob meme about it. Super Star Slayer Typhon. Sky Crisis is a rank 12 that can rank up on top of whatever the monster you control with the highest attack is. If Sky you're fucker. From the extra deck this turn or last turn blocks you out of summoning for the rest of the turn. If summoned this way, stops monsters with 3,000 or more. Can't wait to pay $900 for my two new extra deck like staples. Like astral adversary AA Zeus, Typhon is a great generic. More like asshole adversary? Boards, flood getting out blue eyes tier threats like very Why does he like have eyes? A wide range of end boards. His strongest application, however, is probably for going third. His effects are very clearly designed to match up directly with Zeus, and Zeus by design needs you to special summon from the extra at least. Typhon is an Mega, ultra? Thank God. He loses God. all his ability to threaten the board if Typhon hits the field. Now with the threat of Typhon omnipresent in the format, but that's not the card the I'm worried board about. can threaten now Zeus if it makes it to open game state. But of course, there's the downsides. Locking you out of summons for the rest of the turn makes it less like your average board breaking tool and more like a last resort after you've <laughs> Sorry to hear that, your up. opponent's interruptions, but can't <laughs> you're complain. feeling better. For this reason, it's better in decks like Labyrinth, it is a fiend after all, to protect your back row from the gates when the turn flips back to your opponent. 
Regardless, the totally generic nature and toolbox <laughs> utility of Typhon has made it a strong option that's found its way into most decks in the OCG since its release, making it the second best generic extra deck monster in the set. Let's talk SP about her. Little Knight is a generic link to warrior that can banish a card from field or graveyard on summon. If you know what is the most frustrating part about this card? That that last sentence that's currently on screen. Mm. Like, you know I'm doing it on my opponent's turn. If it was made using an extra deck monster, but locks you out of attacking directly. And when your opponent activates a card or effect, can temporarily banish two monsters on the field as a quick effect, including at least one you control. This might be the single best card we have talked about on this show. Let's begin with the obvious. This card is without a doubt the best card to summon with IP Mask Arena. Mission yep. fucking accomplished on the lore, I suppose. Contrasting yep. it with Nightmare Unicorn, it's got no cost, banishes instead of shuffles, and oh yeah... A second banish. And mind you, it'll have not just the destruction protection from IP, but a way to dodge targeting by using its second effect to tag out and take an additional monster with it. Which can also be used to protect your other monsters on the field from being targeted, which then, by the way, while we're on the subject, gives it utility turn one. Okay. <coughs> this is not exactly true. Um, so... Uh, I talk about this in the, in the short as well, but both of us are kind of ignoring the concept that people might change their play style around it. So if you summon like a Turbulence, they can just infip it on summon, right? And if you tag out, you don't get to resolve it. But that does mean you can hold an emergency to theoretically just go get it back. <laughs> or you can uh, link it off and then like rescue it back to the field because you've never proc'd the effect. It's... um. You will have to change your play style, but it does give you options to give it back, get it back, probably. If you imperm on summon of Turb, you can prevent her to resummon it, but usually the way you get preventer is the alert that you set off of Turb, but if you have drawn preventer, which you're playing two or three copies of, yeah, you win the game. By phasing out monsters you control to keep them safe from Valor and imperm. Anyone here lose to imperm? Meow. Whoop. Congratulations, you resolved. And those protective capabilities also extend to board. Are people going to play Imperm now? Okay, I'm going to be honest with you. You probably should not have been playing Imperm anyway. I think that card is historically bad at present. But I don't know about Agov format. Breaker, since you can chain Little Knight to things like Evenly and Lightning Storm to get some of your monsters off the field so that when the turn rolls back to you, you get to keep them. Can we talk about strength as a board breaker? I've been dying to talk about its utility as a board breaker. When Chaos Angel came out, I joked that it was like if a Link 2 banished on summon, well, it looks like they called my fucking bluff. Needing an extra deck card means it's not quite as generic as something like Nightmare Cerberus, but that needn't even be a factor for decks that can use Link 1. Impermom Mask and Draw Phase. Here we're talking about when you go first and use it as protection. Let's also remember Nightmare Unicorn. Why is Imperm so bad right now? I'm glad you asked. I've been dying to talk about why Imperm's so bad right now. Um, there's just not a lot of really good targets for it, right? Like, uh, the best thing to be Imperming by a country mile, in my opinion, was Cash Tier or Rise Heart, right? And that card no longer exists. Um, uh, Imperming against uh, <clears throat> Unchained maybe gets you, like... <sighs> You get to trade for the uh, the DDD guy at the end of a long combo, but it's never going to prevent them from getting to the combo because imperming like a tour guide is pretty weak, provided they have any extender and their whole fucking deck is extenders. And if they're playing it correctly, they'll have a Sharvara in hand insanely early, which always contests the imperm. Um, Tier Lament uh, does not give a fuck about imperm. There's a significant amount of ways not only you can um, uh, dodge individual... Uh, targeted negation, uh, but also um, going one for one on any individual card against that deck is super weak. Uh, Imperm against Rescue Ace is good specifically on Turbulence because you're always almost like because there's a significant amount of scenarios in which you're not going to be able to target the um, uh, Hydrant. Emergency means that it's always a gamble uh, as to whether they have opened the card that automatically beats you. And a significant amount of their hands already made it to the stupid fucking um, uh, Mud Dragon line off of uh, that fusion link to. And so, and then the fourth best deck is Labyrinth, against which Imperm just does nothing. They're, like, you can Imperm Ariana if they've opened it. So, like, it just, you just end up in a position where it is good in some scenarios, but if you look at the top five decks, the only deck where it has consistent utility is against um, Kash Tira, and then they just excised the Imperm target. Now, theoretically, Imperm is good 
against Unchained if they go for the Nightmare Griffin line, but everyone stopped doing that. Or remember how you use a Link 2 to make him anyway? Well, same shit, different shade of brown. What about VS? Up. You need Imperm to beat VS? Saying that even if you don't make it with an extra deck monster, the quick effect can trade with plenty of interaction on its own. Have we even had time to mention the fact that the first effect can hit cards in the graveyard? Fuck, man, while I was writing this shit, the words instant fusion popped into my head and... Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. It's <laughs> so fucked. Come, We're so fucked. Down on earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass. It's a Catholic prayer, right? Trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. <gasps> this card is seen play uses in it. everything. No two ways about it. It's been a challenge finding decks that aren't playing it. Even if your deck gets locked from it turn one, oh, shit, Squiddy, there's more turns. Just have the option. Fucking branded player. Look at this. Runic stun playing SP. You know this branded fusion thing can't last. <laughs> branded playing SP. Forever start linking XO off on all SP. the It's basically the same as Mirror Jade. I can't name everything this card can do. Wait, what did he say Keep at the, the very end? Be thy name. Forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. <gasps> Not Catholic version. Wait, are there different variants of this? Hold up. The Lord's Prayer variants. Okay, what do we got? Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. Fucking playing Crash Bandicoot here, talking about time trials. What do you mean? Oh, I just found this PDF. This is definitely not a real denomination. Oh, God. Ooh. The message. Our Father in heaven, reveal who you are. Set the world right. Do what's best as above, so below. Keep us alive with three square meals. Keep us forgiven with you and forgiving others. Keep us safe from ourselves and the devil. You're in charge. You can do anything you want. You're a blaze in beauty. Ugh! Jillian, we're talking about the Lord's Prayer. How do, What is the last line of the Lord's Prayer? And lead us not to temptation. Amen. And then the priest says something. And then we say, for the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours now and forever. I just learned today that there are bonus endings to it. Okay. So actually, Joseph has some family members who are of an evangelical faith. Mm -hmm. And we went to one of their weddings. Joseph's mom was raised Catholic and she's a different religion now. So, you know, as part of the evangelical wedding, they like said the Lord's Prayer. And I was like, huh, why are the words different? And Joseph's mom's like, you know that it's different words outside of the Catholic Church, right? That's part of the, uh, one of the big issues between the two, <laughs> between like Protestants and Catholics. I was like, nope, no idea about that. That's why, see, okay, so I'm actually, I've pulled up some different versions. This first one is blasphemous. I don't know what the hell that's of. Uh, we got the, the Jewish New, the Jewish New Testament? What the fuck is the Jewish New Testament about Seinfeld? What is the Jewish New Testament? Um, well, I, I found, so I found out actually in the like 20th century, a lot of like, re, like right wing religious groups also like to do some Jewish stuff. They didn't necessarily like Jewish people though. So yeah, I bet. Be something like that. <laughs> okay, here's here's the Jewish New Testament. What if it's just about Jesus as like a guy? We're like, here's a biography of a a a, a dude. <laughs> All right, here we go. Okay, <clears throat> our Father in heaven. It's got an exclamation mark. May your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come. Ugh. Uh, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us the food we need today. Oh, talk about bread. Jewish religion, all about bread. You can't get bread together for the New Testament. Forgive us what we have done wrong, as we too have forgiven those who have wronged us. Oh, so we we don't trust Americans with the word trespasses. And do not lead us into hard testing, but keep us safe from the evil one. This one's good. Is Okay, so there's no devil. 
but we got to make reference to the devil in our New Testament prayer. <laughs> for kingship, power, and glory are yours forever. Amen. Okay, kingship is kind of a cool word to have in there. Well, we say, like, I guess the line for us then is like, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Kingdom, the power, and the glory. I like kingship. That's a cool one. Uh... Oh, the Jerusalem Bible says, forgive us our debts as we have forgiven those who are in debt to us. That's got to be American. <laughs> I'm sorry, folks. Constitutionally, we cannot forgive your debts. That's a Jesus if he sat on the Supreme Court. Anyways, I just came here to let you know I was going to go to the dry cleaner and then I was going to go to the car people. That's good. See if, ask them to fix my car. Okay. That they makes sense. Call in advance. I'm you should call. Because uh, okay. you have to make an appointment. Fuck. Would you like me to call for you? Yeah. I will do it after stream. Oh, well, I'll just call now then. Okay. And then with the dry cleaner, I just... <clears throat> you just walk in. in. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. I can't believe there's bad endings to this. It's a fucking choose your own adventure of getting into paradise. This come up? Uh, because in this video, Jaxel says the Lord's Prayer, but ends it with the Protestant version. And I was like, that's that's not right. I'm glad that you heard the Protestant <laughs> version. And we're like, that's not right. That's not um, the one that my wife is always muttering to herself after I say something blasphemous. I really, I, I feel so proud right now. This is like the proudest moment I've ever had as a Catholic wife. Oh, you Jesus. You heard the Protestant when you're like, that's wrong. She's trying to convert me. We have another couple, um who are having adult friends as a couple and uh they had a catholic wedding and the guy did all the homework didn't you, when you get catholic married if you're not catholic you got to do all this homework like you got to take classes you have to write a 500 word essay on jesus Just uh catholic, if we, there's like if worksheets we were both catholic we would also have to go through like a process before we got married in the catholic church yeah that's that's not for me baby that's too much that's too okay, much that's why we didn't get can I just write a TMT about the kingdom of heaven? No. What's up, everybody? It's your boy Joseph Rosal. Today, I'm going to be teaching you how to get into the eternal kingdom of heaven. Not be blasphemous. I feel really uncomfortable. You could say the prayer again, but not the not the Protestant version. Okay. Um. I think that that's how the Catholic Church could do outreach, because you know, new kids aren't aren't entering that that religion. They got to get like a Mr. B style influencer. No, I don't think we do. Actually, I think. I think we just, the problem is for like people. Just I gave the Messiah three temptations. Shut up. Shut up. My God. Whoa. Hey, let's not take his name in vain. My God. Oh, why have you abandoned me? <laughs> oh, man. You just be happy that I'm not making you read the Jewish New Testament. Why would you ever make me do that? That I have to be happy that you're not making me do that. Why would I do that? No, I wouldn't. I'm happy with your faith, faith no matter how you practice it. What? Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. The Jillian interludes. They're always a lot of fun. <laughs> Let's get back to the very end of this video. Uh, this card has seen play in everything. No two ways about it. It's been a challenge finding decks that aren't playing it. Even if your deck gets locked from it turn one, shit, Squiddy, there's more turns. Just have the option. Fucking branded players. You know this branded fusion thing can't last forever? Start linking off all beyond. It's basically the same as Mirror Jade. I can't name every. You know, by the way. You're going to see a lot of that in like Chimera. Uh, Jesse talked about it a little in one of the Chimera breakdowns. He was like, I don't know why people aren't just playing Link monsters. Like, yeah, Burfamet locks you. That's it. Like, there's going to be some hands where Burfamet doesn't pan out. Everything this card can do or even give you any better MBT happy, she's Catholic, so she technically can't divorce him. We weren't married in the so Catholic instead, Church. I leave you with so it's not a recognized marriage by the Catholic Start Church. You can just leave if you're Catholic. Some extra shifts or something, because this card will not be common. <laughs> we were married in the New Testament Jewish Church. Much. We were married to Jews well, for Jesus Church. I guess now we'll do the Vsauce Lord. You're living in sin? I mean, yes, but for a number of reasons. Woo! 
Illuminatium? Vsauce time. Okay, so this is this is good version Kitkalos, right? Make any number of tuners you control, level 2, but locks you to synchros. This card smooths out some of Monadium's lines, letting you ramp up into Omritra using only a Heart Boy and one of the balls. Notably, it avoids letting you make just any level 8 synchro you want by being a tuner itself, and thus only really being useful for Omritra, who doesn't Kit was always good. No, it's- This it's, also means Reum Heart can- It's, um... So, we're pretty sure that the current Monadium plotline is, uh, Veda sent him back in time, and he's now trying to get the good ending to the Monadium storyline. And I guess that involves getting to Kit before Rhino Heart does and fucking her up. And it also means allying with Reichhart really early and becoming the Blowjob Brothers. And one card combo into Omritra, which this is before that? Oh, I guess I'm stupid as fuck. Hollow. For the most part, it'll just be a great combo piece to weave into Monadium lines that will save you an extender here or there and take the place of Triage Master in most cases. Veda, oh, but I like Triage Master. Veda, a pendulum monster that gets three counters Veda. when the monster is destroyed and summons itself from the scale by removing 12 counters. As a monster, it can only be summoned by that effect and returns to the hand and tags into a different Veda monster during your standby phase and when your opponent summons from the extra deck, can banish 12 cards face down to end the turn. It was very... Okay, what is the Blue Meanie reference doing in here? Every time I see it, I'm like, what's going on here? Um, it was very funny talking about Veda yesterday and being like, I don't understand this storyline. And someone goes, it's literally just Samsara. And I was like, okay, asshole. Well, now I get it. A Veda monster, and when a <laughs> Fuck. Is destroyed while you control Vsauce, banishes itself... I hate getting got by Yu-Gi-Oh. Realm Eulogy pops a monster you controlled and again an opponent's monster. And if you control Vsauce, pops it. <laughs> and if you control Veda, can banish itself from Graveyard to pop a monster you control. Sharf Sarga spins a monster on the field if you control... Whoa! Oh, there he is. He's okay. He's going back in time, right? He has to be. This is literally foolish samurai warrior. But lets the controller of that monster search. Wait, but he does the future. Adds itself from graveyard to hand if Veda is summoned. And Loka Samsara phases out of Vsauce to summon a heart monster Stupid. with 3,000 attack from extra deck, but it can only use. And there's there's a uh, Veda looking at all the possible futures and all the card art. And down there, that one with Rise Heart on it uh, isn't actually a future. It's Rise Heart sending him a DM telling him to kill himself. Effects once and is banished face down in the end phase. Veda is an incredibly powerful interruption but why? The end goal of a combo deck like Monadium is to assemble a board that will make your opponent unable to play the game. What then is the use of skipping their turn? I suppose the idea is that it lets you skip to the punch instead of more skillfully finding the optimal points to negate, but it comes at the cost of consistency since to find Veda you'll usually need to burn your Omritra search on Elegy, and by the time you even make Omritra you've likely used up one or two of your popping effects. Cool cards for storytelling, not so much for gameplay. I'm just... Unimpressed, I guess. Eulogy, Sarga, and Loka are similar, just more disruptions <laughs> that are searchable with Omritra that definitely aren't as good as reframing. Eulogy at least has better utility going second, and Sharp Sarga can act as a follow-up searcher if that's what you need. Loka Samsara's big claim to fame was going to be summoning Macrocosmos, but we can't have nice things anymore now, can we? Right, Final on. note about Elegy is that it gives you a searchable way to find Veda Carantha, and therefore a Beta consistent Carantha. path to clear new world through a multi-step search chain. Just follow the flowchart. And finally, yeah. Vsauce Samsara is a level 4 tuner that becomes Vsauce on the field or graveyard, can hey, summon itself Vsauce. by shuffling back any number of Vsauces, and can be treated as a non-tuner for a synchro summon. Neat little addition to Vsauce-focused decks that can extend using a Vsauce that's already been used as Astroloud fodder, and has the benefit of being a valid material for Astroloud in the graveyard, something Omritra does have. Okay, because this is, by the way, heart, which this is right. good, this is good, uh, uh, Vsauce, right? He gets thrown to the pass, he goes, this time I'll do it right. This is the good one. And he gets to, he gets to Reichardt before he becomes Lightheart and their buddies. Reichardt, which gets you to a rival, and they have, normal they have summoning have gets you to a star synchro on his own. In the That's OCG, the card we got spoiled yesterday. Playing. God fucking! No, y you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm not doing this yep. anymore. Fuck tier this lament. No, no more everything you need to know. I'm done. Yep, tier I'm lament. Done. Yeah, that was that was intense. So before we get to this bit, I want to point out a tweet that I made yesterday that said, uh, "The uh, everything you need to know from yesterday was so unhinged that it had me actually thinking: Is he going to say the N word?" So here we go. Yeah, sometimes he's an interesting guy. That's right. <laughs> I wish I were Luke von Karma. I wish I were Luke von Karma. Where's my rising new YouTuber award? Stove! Motherfucker! I wish I would look for karma! Fuck all y'all! Fuck all y'all! Brino, don't sub replay me, motherfucker! So he didn't say the N-word. Congratulations.
Another banger video out of the Curry Bandits. Remember, we are we are not just watching the video on stream. We are letting it play in the background. We are commenting, where are the Watt cards? We are subscribing to the channel. Very important. This channel uploads one good video a set, and I ain't, I ain't gonna miss them. <laughs> Deck check is good. If I wanted to watch 10 minute testing, I'd watch 10 minute testing. Age of Overlord. There we go. There's the Watt comments. That's what I like to see. All right. Good stuff. Good stuff. And you know what? I got to say, I wish he would come out with these about a week earlier. Just because I like, I always want to know before the set actually drops. I guess the set hasn't dropped. We still have a couple of days. But God. It is. These are so good. This is a type of content that no one else is making. And I'm so happy about it. Uh, a, a set a set overview that's watchable. No one else is doing that. The closest we've got is like sometimes like some YouTuber with a thousand subs will be like, hey guys, I'm going to talk about every single card in Age of Overlord here. Um, ba, 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 ba. SP Little Knight is pretty good. Can we watch the Scott the Waz versus John Tron rap battle? You know, the reason it's in my recommended is I keep clicking it. I, I keep being like, oh, that this video is stupid. But I click it and I'm like, this is the best video ever. We literally have a week still. No, the set comes out in two days. <clears throat> it's peak. It is peak. If you haven't watched it, go watch it. Rap. Let me, let me, I'll give you, we'll watch the first when does this happen? The first minute. John All right. Take that, you Twitter using fuck. What, you want some of this too? Sure. Right, asshole, That's right, it was secretly AVGN versus Scott the Waz. <laughs> it's it's so good. It's so good. I will say the the Scott impersonator and the AVGN impersonator are insane. They just like they have the cadence down perfectly. It's it's peak. Inaccurate rap battle, no blue border for Scott's bit. Oh yeah? Why don't you suck my ass, dumb fuck? Hey all Scott here. I was just learning how to rhyme, because I was supposed to battle John Tron just to clarify, and then I open the door and see actually I'm here to fight. Who the fuck is this guy? Oh right, AVGN, I love It's perfect. It's peak. It's literally peak. It's literally peak. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> okay, okay. <sighs> Why does that say three months ago? Certainly it should say 13 years ago. I Come on. <coughs> All right. So a lot of people have been saying this, and unfortunately they are 100% correct. <sighs> dueling book has an Edison ladder. So we will be playing a little bit of the dueling book Edison ladder today. Ooh, I do not have a dueling book scene set up. Ooh. Uh, let's play on my alt. See if I can remember what my, uh, my alt is. Hmm. Forgot my password. Yeah, no. 
I'm just going to go my main. My, my ult is at real Donald Trump, but I forgot the pass. Uh, okay, let's see. Um... Whoop, that's the wrong one. Um, no. Uh, a little. There we go. Uh, no, but you can see the very bottom there. Now you can see the very top. I'm going to get this fixed. Okay, that's the right size, but now we have to scooch it over. There we go. That looks good. And how does the card look? Perfect. All right. Konami, get in here. Oh, yeah, Farf, I bet you'd like to try out the Edison ladder, bitch. Oh, oh, look at that. Oh, wait, there's a Rush Duel ladder, too. Oh, for unrated. Oh, ooh. okay, what are we playing in Edison, though? So we could play Monster Mash, but it fucking sucks. So maybe we should play a good deck instead. Uh, we could play Gemini. <coughs> Is this the one? No. Let's play the uh that Diva Hero deck that everyone's playing now. Hold up. Uh That's like Hero Beat playing Diva. God, I have too many fucking lists on here. Uh Hero. Oh, this is not helpful. Nope. 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 Fuck. What did I call this? Maybe Edison? Like Edison or something? Edison 9. Edison this. This is not Edison. Rainbow Neos? No. Glads? God damn, no. Please. Gemini? This is Gemini beat. Ooh! No, we're not playing that. I mean, that was Diva Hero. That's probably a good enough starting point. Okay. Um. Time to net deck. So while I like this combo variant, uh, I want to talk or I want to play the the build that people have been playing. So let's go to E3 Yu-Gi-Oh and just steal a list. Uh, um, RB Orlando okay, top cut. Oh, this is the VOD. I want the yeah deck list. Uh, that dark creator list was tight, but it's basically Vayu. That's the combo diva hero. I'm looking for the more stun oriented one. There it is. Everyone was playing this shit. Uh, at the PK Knights event. Are we playing Gores? We are not. Okay. Warrior Lady, what do you got for me, unholy fat man? Jesus Christ! No, we will not be playing this. Oh my god, what are you fucking... Alex Simo? Oh. Uh and then honest. Are we missing any of the monsters? We are. We are missing one monster. It is Ocean. Then Allure is not in here. Deidre's not in here. Brain Con's not in here. Book is not in here. Heavy, Future Fusion, MST, Rhoda. These are out. We play Gemini Spark. Uh, emergency Call. <clears throat> uh, that's it. <laughs> We do play Brain Con. Why did I take Brain Con out? I was thinking, I was like, Brain Con seems really good. Why would we take out Brain Con? The traps are uh, none of this card, this card, this card, this card, and then 
Oh, God. Come on. Don't make me play this. Uh, two of the Trap Hole. Hero. What is that? Hero Blast? Yeah, that's Hero Blast. Hero Blast. Starlight Road. Uh, Compulse. Um... <clears throat> I'm missing one card. What is it? Call. I don't play Edison, but this shit looks ass. Fuck you! You're right. This is this is what we call a mid-range deck. Because it, it shoots the gap between uh, like a good combo deck and a good stun deck. It's just bad. Uh, Cyber Dragon in the, in the extra deck. In the side deck. <laughs> this is what we call a mid-range. Because it's mid. <laughs> <laughs> we put the mid in mid range here. Um, Grand Mole. Streamer, have you played Vayu? <sighs> Don't worry, you're going to see Vayu. The whole fucking ladder is Vayu right now. And, you know, honestly, I can't blame them. Uh, Vayu is an insanely fun deck. It's so fun. Super Poly, we're that scared of Gemini. Snowman Eater. This is just against aggro decks, I guess. Gores. <clears throat> We're actually not playing Skill Drain. Kaiku. And Knock. Is Knock limited or something? I feel like Knock's a crazy strong card that no one plays. Uh, this is all correct. We need the Chimera Tech. Uh, two Cataster. No Armory Arm. That makes sense. We don't have any way to make it. This guy, uh, this guy, uh, this guy, not this guy, this guy, this guy. We're not playing Gishnilgadon? Come on. Uh, all right. Okay, and the missing cards are Chimera Tech, uh, Cataster number two, and... What the fuck? That's everything. Goyo, Brio, Dardar, Colossal Fighter. Oh Jesus Christ, they're playing two they're playing two black rows. That's um uh, for anyone watching That's not legal. Uh I don't know. Um, I guess we'll just play fucking uh, Fairy Dragon. Why not? He's got a big ass on him. <coughs> Looks good. All right, I'm going to take a piss and then we're going to play some medicine. How are we making Gaia? Fuck you. Wait, how are we making Gaia? That's a great question. Goyo? Like Goyo and, and one of the guys? It could come up. Goyo gets outed, and we rip Miracle Fusion. It's the better option over Ab Zero. Correct. So, no, post-board, we can send Neospatian Grand Mole to the graveyard with Future Fusion. All right, here we go. <clears throat> Time. For, oh, let's turn, on the, let's turn on the sounds. We never get the sounds. Here we go. Washed hands? You got me. I did not wash my hands there. Damn. 
All right, we are going to lose to Antonico. Oh shit, I completely forgot. Oh, my my sleeves are terrible. We're playing Orcist in uh in history right now. Let's turn this down just a little bit. Oh, cool, Blackwing. This is an interesting hand. Oh, I can hit the thinking emoji. So what do we want to do here? Um we can rota for I really don't want to die to Kalut. Rota for Stratos is so... He would never make this play if he didn't have Kalut. So... I'm going to draw phase ma uh, MST the back row because I'm stupid. It was Dim Prison. Hmm. The problem is if we get colluded here, we just die. <coughs> We're always roading. We could grab Alias and Gemini Spark it. That's so telegraphed. I, we're going to get colluded. I feel like there's not a lot we can do about it. Hmm. Mine con, then overlay into a rank four trust. Very true. All right, let's just get colluded. Yeah! <laughs> we are getting cooked here. We'll telegraph Gores. Maybe make some play a little less aggro. Oh my god, come on. <sighs> no way there's two Kalutes, right? Oh, thank God. <laughs> I mean, it's like, it's so important that we retain a monster on field in a game state where we're already advantaged. Uh, let's go ocean. All right, we win here. Hmm. Is there? Do we end step Gemini Spark the monster? No. Let's let's just be good. Um. Stratos, the back row. No, I don't want to walk into Torrential. I would spark the back row, if anything. Let's just uh, let's just go combat. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Uh, this telegraphs that it's um, Gemini Spark, but they know it's Gemini Spark, so... Checking the graveyard. Why is that? Oh, because we have Vayu. Whirlwind. Hmm. That's interesting. Um, I'm going to Solemn the normal here. They go Vayu. Yeah, we got this.
I would have popped there. No, I want them to commit to another normal because Gemini Spark just blows them out. <coughs> uh, okay. So it's like an aggro Blackwing deck. What are we supposed to do against that? Going second, we don't have a lot of really fantastic options. I mean, like, Sidra's good, but any hand that's worth its salt is going to have access to Kalut, and it's going to get clapped. It might be worth it to play Sidra just for for the body. I like Gores for sure. Uh, I don't hate the Snowman Eaters, and I also don't hate the Deck Devs, but we'll... I'm going to put the Sidras in, too. We have Honest. Uh, what do we take out? I actually have no idea. Um, I think the Road is kind of bad. I think Dust Shoot's not good going second. Brain Con doesn't really do anything here. <clears throat> road Contest Icarus. You're right. We did see Icarus. Um... What's the deck dev target? Uh, Diva, Gilman, Cataster. Uh, no, Mirror Force is really important. We could just start shaving, like, search spells, because I'm stupid. Like an E-Call, Hero Blast is, like, a generally mid-card. No, Hero Blast is all right. We can cut... No, Call is really important, too. Everything here is so important. What the fuck? We'll just put in one Sidra. <clears throat> Compulse. Compulse is incredible. This hand's so baller. This hand is unbelievable. Sure, the blue flame set one pass, set two pass. We getting dust shooted? No. This is interesting. Um, hmm. How much do we want to get cooked here? I think we're just setting prison and passing. Set three pass. We could even make Android. Set three Android pass. Got a MST for the Icarus. We're not going to, I mean, fucking. <clears throat> you can black rose them. We could. <coughs> black rose set prison MST. Is that worth? I don't know. That's a lot of investment. Uh, we're going to try it. It was Icarus, yeah. Good call, chat. Uh, I think just the one D prison's enough. I don't want to overcommit into uh, something crazy. <clears throat> Telegraphing gores here, that's fine. Okay. Um, I wonder if it's worth setting an additional card. It's worth setting the Compulse, because if they Heavy Storm, we can Compulse our own monster. Ooh, okay. Sure. Value this. Well, now I want to put the pressure on.
open the heavy. Brain con targeting which we're going to compulse in response. Yep. They've got Kalut. I wonder if they don't attack here. Like force me to attack in and take a huge minus on a Kalut. They definitely are not supposed to attack here. Oh, okay. Or they're doing this. Just getting cooked. What is this? 850? Uh, this is 350 I'm taking. All right, uh, we're taking five, nine here. This is 27. We take eight. <coughs> this could go either way. Oh, tell me they did not fucking rip north wind. Oh, God. Hold up. We don't have a lot of monsters, so this is really scary for me, actually. If they had the Kalu, why were they attacking with these monsters? I just feel like they were meant to hold them back. That's our win con, by the way. You are looking at the win con. Is it worth prisoning? Such a weak prison. Icarus attack Vayu. Come on. One time. Okay. Uh, we will bottomless that. Tisk tisk tisk. Why would I be setting into this? Come on. <clears throat> Vortex. Oh my God. Uh. Okay. Um. Sure. <coughs> One time. Oh, come on. Who plays Vortex? Oh yeah, we will be doing this. Ah! <laughs> we have so few monsters left. Oh my god. Come on. Oh, that's that's a pretty good one. Oh, the second spine Gilman coming in. Oh. <coughs> Why didn't we activate Stardust here? So a Stardust that's been summoned off of Starlight Road uh, has not been properly synchro summoned. So at the end phase, it won't actually return. So theoretically, we could have activated Stardust there to negate. Doesn't do anything. It doesn't come back. Thank God for that, by the way. If it was just a free, full-on Stardust, it would be the most annoying card ever. <clears throat> wow. God! I love this format! Yeah, we don't want to play in a triple tack, after all. Ugh. 
Uh, let's go back to the correct back here. Uh, okay, let's run it back. Play a couple more. Okay, maybe not. Dio strano. <clears throat> Oh. <laughs> Decent opener. One time heavy. We're going to commit to D.Va. <clears throat> it's more damage to get in with both these guys, right? 17 plus 6 is... 20... 23. It's the same amount. D.Va Black Rose. Oh, we don't have access to Black Rose. Uh, let's just go combat here. I don't want to commit to the future fusion until I have Solemn up. Okay. Uh huh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that one. I don't know about that one. Misclick. Well, even if it wasn't a misclick, just put it back and go for the other one. You know it. <laughs> oh. Show the replay? Ah, okay, all right. It was morale tech. Oh, I see. Oh, Jesus Christ. Vayu again, probably. What the fuck? Just flip up the prison. Dog, just flip up the prison. No one's going to shark you on that. You flip it up, you go MC, and then you go get the other one. Come on. <clears throat> I don't know how to, well, I don't know how to communicate that to my opponent and be like, hey, I'm not going to shark you. Like, all right, Boolin. <clears throat> history spoilers? They're actually not history spoilers. Uh, the the winner or loser of a history game is just whoever has stuff to do and leaves the uh, the dead game first. I was afraid of that originally uh, when I was doing like history and then playing Dueling Book on stream. And then I realized we really do not care. Oh, pl it's the fucking mirror. So the combo variant usually doesn't play E-Call or they played at one. Such a liar. You would 100% shark him. No, no. Those days are behind me. No, I... <clears throat> I, um... I never like... I never sharked, especially a competitive Ariel. Oh, it's the combo variant. Uh, it is just playing the one e-call. But uh, the... um, it, Something about Dueling Book. If you all remember my old Dueling Book streams, there were times when I was like really angle shooting. And I look back and I watch those and I'm like, that's disastrous behavior. That would never... It's not good practice. It would never translate into real life play. Uh, we're going to MST here. It's Mirror Force. All right, this is a great diva. Just get a guy out. <clears throat> For this deck, we want to keep him off, um, like a uh, Caius. We can't really do that. We can at least force two cards out of the hand for the Caius. Uh, I'm actually just going to set the call here. I don't want to walk into something crazy here. Before Master Duel, streamers would get super fucking toxic about people playing slow on Dueling Book. Uh, yeah, I definitely wasn't, like, doing that. Um, but what was... Do you have a good example of one of your angle shoots? Oh, right, um... <clears throat> uh... No, it would be, like... 
I would make an understandable misplay um, based on like some of the infrastructure of DB. And then my opponent would be like, dog, you can't do that or you need to walk it back. And I would be like, no, I'm not like you, uh, you like you knew what I meant to do or like something. And then uh, we would call a judge and the judge would be like, you did what you did. I don't know what to tell you. Um, I don't know. I, I just I don't know. It, it, it The the actual number one thing that I don't like about the way I used to play is if you go watch that old um, I think Femboy Championship series where I placed uh, like a uh, bird up. I am super toxic. Um when I die to the Edo Pro timer. And uh, looking back, it's embarrassing. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, we might get cooked here, not gonna lie. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, still not, I'm still not, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna set it. I'm not gonna set it. Cause they can, oh, I actually have to set it or else I'm dead to armory arm. Pro set heavy storm, let's see. Um, but it's something that I've worked on and Master Duel has been very helpful. Like I do this in, in paper already and getting it to translate to online play is just important. Viewing the person across the screen from you is like a person who is fallible and can make mistakes and not like an antagonist. Uh, definitely. <clears throat> the fuck they are playing this so slow. It wasn't pro set heavy. Uh, oh, right. Um, I don't really want to commit more than this. Can we kill them here? This is 18 plus 17, or it's 24 plus 17. Uh, no, I don't want to, I don't want to commit into a torrential. Or maybe I do, because they have a set card. Yeah, let's just go ocean here and try and push for lethal. 18, 15, yeah. <clears throat> it was Reaper. Yeah, I don't have it out for Reaper. That's crazy. Do I push for damage here? Just the 24? I'm going to try it. Uh, or I'm going to get cooked. All right. Back to you. Anyway, um, <clears throat> it's uh, definitely something I've been trying to work on because I, I do think it's... It's fun, especially in games like Master Duel, to be like, oh, my opponent's bad, my opponent's, um, you know, just floundering. But I think it's actively bad to be like, my opponent is trying to fuck me over. Like, my opponent is... is doo-dooing on me. I really do not feel safe doing this, because I know they have all the parts necessary of the armory arm combo, with the exception of the, uh, the boy. Like, my opponent is bad, I think is funny, but my opponent is evil is obviously bad. It's not good. Uh, we've seen the MST, which is good, so maybe we get away with this Mirror Force. <clears throat> Do you have a Hero City deck? No. I don't think Hero City is very good. I want to go back to Gemini Spark Skyscraper shenanigans. Well, the good news is the Gemini Spark is independently one of the best... Cards in the game. Okay, we are not going... Yeah, obviously you can't do this. Um, We are going Armory Arm here. Do we Do we have it? <clears throat> I don't know. I think that... Oh, okay, we're just making it a six. I think Yu-Gi-Oh! is at its best when both players are having fun. And I think that... God, if we get away with this mirror force, it's going to be sick. Ah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And that's how I prefer to play anyway. <clears throat> Uh, so what are our good draws here? Even Diva's not fantastic. We don't have a lot of them. Although that is that is one of them. That is actually the end of the game, isn't it? 
Wow. <sighs> All right, one down. Okay, so it's the more combo heavy variant of this. So what should I be concerned about? Uh, a super poly could be funny. Super poly might be comedy. Um, Pachycephalo is not terrible. No, it is. They have enough removal that this is actually not going to accomplish anything interesting. Uh, eh, that kind of has a rough time against Sydra. Definitely Kaiku's coming in. Um, let's go Gores for sure. Uh, Gores <clears throat> theoretically can muck up like the, the OTK. Uh, and I kind of like the Dusties too, but I don't love them. So what are we cutting? I think the um, the dust shoot because we're going second. Mm, maybe an e call. One more. The warrior lady's probably pretty bad, but I'm gonna keep her in. Do some scenarios where I like it. Mm, let's cut a spark. I I love cutting sparks. I love just being stupid and cutting a fucking spark. Hero blast. Hero Blast is a much worse card than Spark in this matchup. You're right. Decent hand. <laughs> June of last year, I got to stand by the wayside as another judge got involved in a, no joke, 37-minute call, the details of which have been lost to legend. No, yeah, I think that... An important part of playing Yu-Gi-Oh! is recognizing that, like, the matches that you win by being a scummy-ass shark are just not going to outweigh the matches that you win by both players feeling at ease, you know? And also, like, if you get to the point where you're so concerned about winning in Yu-Gi-Oh! that it becomes, like, a fundamental calculation about, like, how you're going to make your opponent feel terrible, you know, um, fuck off. Like, play a different card game, you know? <laughs> or play a different game entirely. Oh, we are getting sauced today. Genesis, thanks for the 200... <clears throat> Oh, they are setting the fuck up. What do we do here? That's not bad. Well, we have to MST this because we need to contest the Greffer or else we are dead, dead. Yeah. All right, I mean... What are we concerned about? They can make an 8 here? <clears throat> uh... That's Stardust, so we need to set the Dimensional Prison. I'm going to... I'm just going to do Dimensional Prison. I'm going to get greedy. Uh, Torrential probably should be set as well, but I don't want to walk into Heavy. I'm like, this is a really good Heavy. Like, set MST into Heavy. It's pretty sick. Ah, uh, yep. Does not beat my alias. I guess they go Goyo here. That's pretty good. Infernal Prodigy. Oh my god, they just have it at any point from this... From here on, all they need is the D.Va. Banger hand from opponent on this one. Dark Greffer, Pitch, Malicious, Send, uh, Plague Spreader, Zombie, Normal Summon, Stratos. It's strong for sure, but I think we can do something. That's an unbelievable draw. That's like a shockingly good draw. The problem is Heavy. How much do we want to play around Heavy? I think we can't afford to, because they have access to... They have access to everything, right? They can go... Mali, Plague, 8. They just need 1, 2, start 2. I mean, Diva does it. I think we have to just, like... <clears throat> heavy isn't real our way into this one. If we set our entire hand, we can bluff Starlight Road, and maybe they don't do it. We'll keep the Miracle Fusion for sure. We're definitely setting Spark. I'm going to make them think I drew uh, Starlight Road. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, another guy. That's sick. Torrential. Okay. Sangan. Oh, fuck. All right. Now we have to contest the combo. Um... Now heavy, he checked for Starlight Road. No, we're going to make him think that we're pro. I wonder if we Miracle Fusion to beat the combo. I'm going to hold it. I, I, I feel like we're not going to get out of this unless he doesn't have Heavy Storm. So we might as well be greedy. 
Like if he has heavy, I think we're cooked a hundred times out of a hundred anyway. Yep. <clears throat> yeah. Just going Caius here. I hate good players, man. That shit is not fair. Speaking of. God, all we need is a guy. Like a, a mid-sized guy. I mean, we got to just push for damage for sure. It's so frightening thinking that they just have it at any time. They have the combo. We know they have Diva, Mali, Plagues. Getting the extra turns is like a scenario where they could theoretically draw Plagues, which would be nice. Oh, like, this is not bad either. Um, Brain Con's an insane draw. Okay. Is it worth Brain Conning this guy now? Brain Con this guy now... Keeps him off three, four, five, six, seven. So he can black rose otherwise. Is that worth my time? No, if he commits to black rose, he loses the diva and we get to torrential. Uh so holding the brain con means that if I draw a monster, I win. Okay. We'll just we'll just hold here. <clears throat> Thinking back, we should have thought for a second before we let their Torrential resolve. Mm. Do we go for it? Be Heavy Storm, Brain Con, Normal Kaiku? Yeah, let's try it. Two for four? Oh, let's go. Oh, I thought I think we played that one insanely well. I think we played that one super good. Holy shit. Oh, I want to see if he was holding the heavy storm and we're just a genius or if or if they weren't. Okay, they didn't have it. <laughs> oh no, this is this is game one. God, this really was a pretty banger opener. Oh, they ripped the the straightos. That spark draw was insane. <coughs> no, they never had it. God damn it. Drew E call with zero reasonable targets. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing. We know the last draw was dim for or solemn. I wonder why we didn't solemn the heavy storm. Oh, we were still dead if we did that because we brain con that. Yeah. Ugh. All right, last try, last try. Why we never plague malicious? I don't think we had a super profitable way to do it. <coughs> It was maybe worth fire, because, like, we could never contest the back row, and you want to go, like, I guess, what's his name into it? What's the warrior guy? Colossal fighter. 
Bottomless for Kaiku, though, should have solemned. Well, it doesn't... Well, he doesn't know the brain con, so it's fine. Oh, God, is it sworn? Oh, my God, it probably is. No heavy storm, if you insist. Uh, yeah, I think you're right that it's the higher percentage play. This one's weird because I really want to commit to D.Va. But I really should just go straight O's because we have to develop this Gemini Spark. <coughs> okay. This Honest is going to do a lot of work. I love the heavy storm sleeves, by the way. That's so funny. Please don't be sworn. <laughs> this hand does not deal with sworn. Please be Raiko. Okay. Right on time. Uh, okay. Let's uh, normal alias, right? We're doing this for Mega Hamster. Yep. What we popping, King? Yeah, sounds right. Oh, it's Vayu! It was Vayu the whole time! Alright, I, I don't give a fuck about no Vayu. <laughs> Who's the beatdown? Me, asshole. <coughs> don't you MST this. Alright. Allure. Sure. Yeah, this Honest is gonna have to put in a shitload of work here. Banished Dark Refer? Jesus Christ, what's the hand? <laughs> How could that possibly be the Banish? Sirocco's fine. I wonder if we Honest here. Um, honest does what, 19? We can Miracle Fusion our way out of this one? Yeah, why not? Second main, we go... Oh, Jesus. Oh, my God. Those are bluffs. I know all those are bluffs. This is nothing to me. This shit ain't nothing to me, man. Um... Yeah. Like combat. We do have a prison. Uh, I guess we'll spark here. No, we won't. Ooh, we're torrentialing. Mm, I'll sit in main then. No, I'm still going to let this go. <clears throat> Surely you spark there? No way. I want to develop the spark with the Neo Sailor. Oh, on there? Yeah, I was definitely supposed to do it there. That was stupid. Yeah, that was real dumb. Oh, that's horrifying. How'd you get into Mate? Uh, Darth Nash to uh, told me to get into it, and I said, I'll do anything you say, sir. We're holding it for next game. Exactly! No, we're just gonna rip the third alias off the top. I'm just a genius. Oh, that's not bad either. Uh, let's go for a diva line, I suppose. Got the ability to just threaten Miracle at any time. Oppression? Oppression for one? Bottomless. Bottomless for one? That's fine. <laughs> Sucks that I can't oppression the stupid fucking Vayu. They've played this really well. <coughs> yeah. 
I'm running out of guys. Like, I have very few guys left. If that's Raiko, yeah, we are in a bad position. Oh, thank God. The spark got value. <laughs> oh, wow. That's good. Um, in their defense, I would never... You would never think that spark because I would have always chained it to the uh, to the torrential tribute. So actually, I'm I'm playing on cloud infinity. Uh, we'll go go bottomless here. I imagine that's Pryo. Are they adding it back? Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's fine. This is kind of rough for us. Because they can always do it in main phase two. Like, we have to prison this, but they can just make another one. Yeah. Alright, we gotta find an out to this. Why didn't they send? I think it was a special. Is oppression not mutual? It is, but uh, Vayu doesn't banish for cost, so oppression doesn't do anything against it. They played this super well. Oh, that's a great draw, but I think not sufficient because we've already been through Stratos. What do we get here? Um, oh, you know... No, I don't think there's anything that does it. I think we have to hold here and try and find a spark. We can wall up, right? I mean, I don't want to wall up. We have a million damage. Or we have a million guys. We just pass here. That oppression was one oppression activation, by the way. Switch to defense. No, I don't want them to get over it with just a, a jobber. If it was Greffer special, you should have oppressioned it. Okay, maybe I think that they did forget it. But we're, we're beyond it now. Oh, Jesus, come on. Oh, uh, that is like the draw I did not want to see. It doesn't do anything. Uh, we'll at least force them to get it. Wow, that's rough. <clears throat> what are we trying to do here? Have we been through both Gilman? We're actually one Gilman down, so... Diva's crazy, but that's pretty much it. Whoa! Oh my god, what the fuck? You have a lot of confidence in that set card. They must have. It's got to be back row, right? Ooh, that's a good one. They must have two of them. Like, it's got to be, like, Mirror Force. No, I mean, there's no reason. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, but that doesn't do anything. Yeah, you got it. They played that super well. And we, we really did O-Bungle that one turn. Uh, so, against Vayu, we definitely want Knock. Uh, we definitely want Kaiku. Uh, I think that's it, though. I really don't give a fuck about any of these others. Hero Blast really kind of mid in this matchup. Really like Prison, really like Bottomless. I, I like the rest of this. We can move the... Ch oh, we're going first. We're fine. You got schlonged? I don't think that's true. I think it was really close. I mean, we had them down to 300. The, um... The misplay from us was, was pretty... Pretty rough. Thingy game with margins that close, we... But at the same time, they forgot to Foolish, so like... If they had also played that turn optimally, we would have just lost, lost. What is the deck virus for? Uh, it's for like... Aggro decks... Maybe, I don't know. What is the deck dev for? I should know this, I feel. Uh, bowl for the synchro? Yeah, that's... Frog, fairy. Oh, okay. This hand looks killer. This hand looks real good. I'm just gonna make uh, my guy pass. Get that Gilman out of my deck. I don't even like doing this. Uh, I, I'm lying. I really like doing this. 
I've been pilled on two, Gilman. It's been so good. Uh, let's just make Android. Uh, what do we want to set? MST probably, right? It's going to be the biggest knock you ever did see. Oh my fucking god. What did we get? Oh, Jesus. Okay, well that actually doesn't improve things at all. Because here we send, what, Alias, I think Diva, actually. Uh, let me just get in for 24. Show me the gores. Nope. Uh, we're going to bluff that we drew... No, they know we drew Future Fusion. Yeah, they know we drew Future Fusion, so they would they would never have any hesitation at Heavy Storm here. And it's too high value. There's Future Fusion, too. Oh, God. Can we just kill them here? Um, you know, we actually were supposed to send Stratos there. Oh, right. That was a huge misplay. That, that might cost us a lot. Okay. That's pretty good. Hmm. This is Ryko, yeah. Probably thinking about getting the future fusion here. <laughs> We're just running back row. Sure. Not great hits. Uh, do we hit for 19 here? Turns off like... I mean, we get sauced by Heavy Storm in that case. Yeah, we can't flex it as anything more impactful, I don't think. Fuck it, he didn't have Heavy Storm last turn. Or at least didn't feel confident using it. <sighs> Ooh, wow. God, I hate when they're actually good at Yu-Gi-Oh. Oh, we are dead, dead. We are D-E-A-D, -E -D, dead. He drew that now for sure, otherwise he wouldn't have Raikou'd the back row. Absolutely not true. You Raikou'd the back row to try and chase out the, uh, the Starlight Road. I think it was, I think what he did was right. Oh my god. <laughs> yep. <laughs> You're fine, you're fine. Gang, gang. I lied. Plagues here. We're making Goyo. This is kind of interesting. Because um, we could really pop off with this uh, ocean. We should have been Stratos. Not binning Stratos here may have cost us this entire game. 
because we could have gotten an extra hit in. I mean, that's the that's the actual practiced Edison player difference. Um, oh, they're going to go up by six, too. That's crazy. All right, one-time brain con off the top. I mean, that outs the Goyo. <sighs> oh, it doesn't out this guy. I don't know what we're meant to do here. We go Alias into Magical Android. They go Goyo Guardian, take Ocean. Warrior Lady Nagoyo, alias into the ocean. Alternatively, we don't have an out to the android. Yeah, we got to do this. If it's dim Priz, we lose. Okay. Android too big. Please don't set another card. Oh. Bleak. How the fuck are we winning this game? Brain Con. That could do it eventually. We just need to find an alias. <clears throat> yeah. This column. Oh, I, I was like, I thought he was targeting. I was like, what the fuck? Okay. I, uh, I got my ass beat there. I'm not gonna lie. I, uh, I played worse than my opponent and deserved to lose that one. But, you know, it is crazy to hear I played worse than my opponent and I deserved to lo lose that one. And then you actually lose. You know, sometimes that doesn't happen in the TCG. <laughs> Whew. The android actually mattered. Yeah, right. No, that was, um... I think that... Yeah, we definitely could have played that game one better. Game two is kind of strange in general. Heavy Storm mattered. Yeah, 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 of course. Playing big and a heavy. Well, I think what happened is I got um I got excited because last game I played big and a heavy and got rewarded for it. And so I was like, let's do it again. Oh, man. This was a lot of fun. I'm super excited to play this a little more on stream. I hope you all, I hope you all are willing to watch because I would more than I, I would really like to continue doing shit like this. I think it would be really fun.
Um, let's play just a little bit of Master Duel. We'll play just a teensy tiny bit of Master Duel. You <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh. <coughs> True. Shooting for the zero viewer stream. No, no, no. If I was doing that, I'd go live as Farfa. I'm just being mean to Farfa because he's in chat. <laughs> I only watch Cash Tira ladder grinding. Oh, true. I'm trying to get out of uh, Diamond 3. Where, how far away am I? Three games away? Let's see if we can... We'll play till we lose. We'll play Master Duel till we lose. How's that sound? Oh! Oh, shit. I was, someone said, or you could play something based like Rush Duel. Shit, I should be doing that. Bro playing ladder instead of the cup. All the good players are in the cup. What are you running in your pearly deck? I just net decked pack. Nothing interesting. This hand uh, is fucking crazy. Alright, better luck next time, baby. What the fuck? I, I held on and it was like... <gasps> Let's go play Rush. <clears throat> uh, <laughs> you can set a card? No! Nope! All right, we're going to play just a little bit of Rush here. This is... Mm. I'm trying to... I'm going to see if I can get Master 1 and then Cog in both formats this month because I have a little more time than usual. And I'm doing the Bronze Climb with a fucking Tenny deck and it's just crazy just stunting on kids. Look at this. Look at this list. This is legal. All right, uh, we have to, unfortunately, we have to turn on the BGM for this because uh, Mimi has the best BGM in the entire game. So uh, today we're going to be playing a little bit of Mimi and Mimi. And that's <coughs> because I grounded out and got the Bubble Party deck. So you can see <laughs> what we're playing. The way Disco Fever works is all of your level 7 or higher monsters have to be Aqua, so we can't play uh, Dragios, we can't play Seven Sword Magician. We're playing the uh, Three Limit Torna, and we're playing Gravity Press, and then everything else basically is an Aqua, so that Seahorse Carrier can be better. Curry Bot, uh, Rice Terror Secure, it turns out, is an Aqua. We are still playing Thunder the Thunder because it's crazy, and Summon Skull for the same reason. But the payoff is you get to play Party 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 and Triple Threat Thunder, Die and Catch the Boogie Master, Mommy. All right, let's make it happen. She's not a child chat. She's a 3,000-year-old vampire. What I like about Mimi and Mimi is that the joke isn't, oh, this sexy child is actually not a child. The joke is, this child-looking adult is just from the 80s. She just does not, she doesn't know how to communicate with the children. She's super out of touch. Uh, I, I think it's very funny. Okay, let's listen to this banger. Looks like the mirror. <clears throat> but they're playing bad cards.
Get the fuck out of here, Summon Skull! Boogie Blast! That's the name of the attack. Okay, we'll turn it down just a little bit. Or will we? Okay, we'll turn it down. How's that? Turn that shit up. All right, we'll turn a little bit up. Thunder the Thunder. Sink my guy. Do you have your own? It's got to be Boogie Master. You are Boogie Blasted here. I was going to say, why would they do this? Otherwise, they'd sink Torn of the Wind Weaver to get over with Cannon. Oh, it's Dragios! What the fuck? What? That's fucked up. Oh, now I'm going to show you why they call me Draggy Oss. Wait. Oh, my God. I'm about to sauce this fucking guy. Normal seahorse carrier. Activate. Grab back bubbly elf. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. Normal rice terror secure. Normal this asshole. Wait, that's seven, not ten. And now, triple threat thunder! Let's see how powerful your Dragios is when his ass is dragon back to zero attack. Combat. Kill! That set card is Phantom Bind. And it's not gonna be enough. Boom! Okay, as long as they don't draw Dragios, we win here. But if they draw Dragios, we lose. <laughs> it's too much attack. Alright, anything but Dragios. Anything but Dragios. Anything but Dragios and we win. Literally anything but Dragios and we win. Literally anything but Dragios and we win. Ah! Come on! Unnecessary. Wait, we're alive! We're alive! Hold up! <laughs> uh, gravity press sinks it to 18, but we don't have an 18. We can't get. Wait, we can get Kanan to 18. We have one, two, three aquas in graveyard. Kanan will go to 22. 21 minus three, it'll crash. But we're gonna put a third one in grave for gravity press. We have four already. We gotta just we gotta gain we gotta gain life points and pray. It's Boogie Master or Bust, baby. <coughs> Do we play around Phantom Bind? Yeah, we know that they're on it. And they had an activation window when we attacked. Okay. Okay, provided they don't have a tribute monster, we could live here. If they order their attacks incorrectly. No, it's actually, we're actually just toast on board. Oh, wait, hold up. Do we not die here? No, they have the third Dragios. Suck my fucking dick and balls, dude. <laughs> God damn it, that's so annoying. <laughs> Oh, 
This is so not chill. <laughs> I got outplayed. I'm not gonna lie. They drew three Dragios. Sometimes you get owned, you know? All right, I got, I got a couple more in me. You're already cog? I was cog day two. I, I was just like, I grinded the fuck out of this. I love rush duels. I think they're so fun. Gag me with a dick! <laughs> that's, that's, the, that's the lie. What the fuck? Someone get online! I want to play! Matching failed. Dead game. Dead game. Actual dead game. Oh! I closed it out because I was like, it's got to be something wrong with the game. <laughs> Hold up, I'm, I'm loading back in, I'm loading back in. Get me back in this game. <laughs> Give me back in the game, get me back in the game! Give me back in the game! God damn it. This hand looks fucking terrible. <laughs> oh wait, this hand is crazy. I just realized what this hand enables. First and foremost, you know that we're doing my boy. And then guess what, asshole? We got a light aqua monster here. This guy back. I wonder if it's worth using the Mystic Elf to get the last remaining monster, or if it's worth gaining a thousand. Let's gain a thousand. Boogie on down, baby! So am I reading this card wrong? Whose total levels equal 10, but it actually means up to 10. No skipping the cutscene. Uh, we will not skip the cutscene next time we boogie. Two bangers. Getting that guy off the field is pretty important. It's mistranslated. I was playing as if it was equals 10 the entire weekend. God damn it. God, that... OST! Sevens is peak. Oh, fucking hell. We're getting draggy ossed. They're gonna drag my ass. <clears throat> is draggy ass maybe just better? For sure. But this is mommy. Well, absent draggy ass, we actually are in a pretty great position here. Uh, okay. Is there a good place to watch 7 sub Hulu? Well, now I feel good that I gained all that life. This is actually a pretty fucking strong hand. Alright. 
Okay, Seahorse Carrier is a UR that you could only get from drops, and I ground the fuck out of this in order to get him. And I just have to say, I feel really good about doing that, because this card is unbelievable. He's curry bot for the entire deck. Exactly. Uh, we're going to attack the gravity press in here because... Oh, they're spellcasters. We're actually fine. I was playing around phantom bind, but nothing on board is a fairy. All right, so we get a little cooked by Dragios and that it gets board presence back, but we did a shitload of damage there. And it's got to be exactly Dragios because otherwise uh, Torna and gravity press can test it. Is that like a curse you have? Why does everyone already ha always have Dragios? Because it's uh, the cornerstone card in the best deck. That's why. Uh, if all it is is the Seven's Road setup, we're fine. It is. Okay, so we're going to lose our board here, but we live, and their guys go down at the end of the turn. So Diane Keto will make quick work of this if we can find the Gold Digger. Yeah, this is a very beatable board. We're going to lose everything, but... They're going to go down to just these guys, which are not good on the crackback. Yeah, all we need is any tribute monster. Although we've been through a lot of them, to be honest. All right, here we go. <clears throat> Time to boogie. There she is. Oh, we're you know we're fucking boogieing. Uh, El uh, Bubbly Elf is a two, so we go... All right, you all ready to watch the cutscene? Here we go. What the fuck? Where was the cutscene? Once per duel. God damn it. All right, we'll get it next time. I'm pretty sure this is lethal, but I haven't checked. Oh, I should have checked because nothing actually gets over the witch. <coughs> We're going to fucking die. Okay, in my defense, we were supposed to win here, but I'm very dumb. Uh-oh. It's okay. It's not like they draw five or anything. It's going to be no uh, no tribute monsters, trust. We've already seen two sevens road in a Dragios. We're fine. Yeah. This card's nothing. That shit ain't nothing to me, man. No, it's actually nothing. Holy shit. Wait, we could do this. Hold up. We could do this. This, this clears field, but only just. All right, all we need is our last Boogie Master. Or Torma. No, Torma doesn't do it. Here we go. Hmm. Uh-oh. It's okay. The only damage they can do is the Torma attack. So we set the guys with high attack and we just pass here. We're dead. We're not dead. We're fine. We have one more Boogie Master left. You should know by now the Boogie never ends. Now, theoretically, if they find their last Dragios, they can sack off their board for it. I'm just... I just got to shut my fucking mouth. Holy... Holy guacamole. You all better be clipping these. I want to put up the Dragios supercut. Any monster here kills us. Yeah. <coughs> okay, this time I'm going to do it, but we're going to watch the... The problem is, the reason we're not winning is because we're not watching the animation. You understand that, right?
This this hand's really great. Can I get a quick rundown on this deck? Yeah, it's um it's light aquas, uh, which enables Seahorse Carrier as a tribute engine for Diane Keto the Boogie Master. We have a skill that pumps her above everything. Uh, one of these hands, I see. No nothing. Just gonna try and draw four here. Does the skill lock you into playing just aquas? Locks you into playing 15 aquas and no level seven or higher monsters that are not aquas, which cuts you off of Seven's Red Magician and Dragios. But the thing the deck does that's pretty impressive is life gain, which is actually super important in Rush Duel because you're always drawing, so card advantage is kind of at a, a pittance. Not being dead is super important. You can still play level 7 plus normal monsters. I might try the version that plays Dark Magician, just like because he's a guy. Oh, I got the animations on. I don't need to see Seven's Road Magician animation. Oh, this is a really mid-end board. Okay, so it's actually, there's no chance of Dragios because they're on the uh, spellcasters. All right, here we go. Come on. Mm. Probably worth going Torma just to cut the road magician off. We're keeping this seahorse carrier in hand because if I ever get Boogie Master, boy, is it going to pop off. Yeah, there are fusions in the sevens. We will get fusions eventually. Karibot. Karibot is just bad seahorse carrier. Fuck you, Torma. Oh, it's turn four. They can accelerate every turn from here. Not that it matters. What do I care? Remember your skill boost? Uh, cannon boosts to 21. Don't I have to perform a normal summon of a big a big lady? Jesus. Are we trying to OTK here? No. Okay, so I just don't know what my deck does in that case. He's back. The blowjob, brother. All right, I'm going to take a bajillion damage here. Oh, my God. But you know how we could resolve that problem is by gaining a bajillion life points. All right, here we go. Ready? There she is. That's actually a series of really good draws. Let me see how I'm doing this. So we tribute summon Diane Keto that contests this. We normal summon the Kanan. Ugh. I think we were actually supposed to get Bubbly Elf there to contest the Dark Sork. Oh, but it doesn't. <clears throat> I think we just summon everyone and then we Diane Keto to gain life. Or we can Gravity Press to eat the Torma. That's better for sure. Gain a million life. Here we go. Ready? The boogie beat. The 
Ooh! Oh my god, she's perfect. Keep moving! Be nice if we could just kill them here. <coughs> Boom! We're boogieing! Ah, there's still a Seventh Road Magician in deck. That's so annoying. I think we have to hope they just didn't get it. Ah, that's there's like a zero percent chance. Oh, Thunder the Thunder's insane here. It lets their non-tribute deal with Gravity Press. Oh, not Witch. Oh, it's actually not Witch. She's going to go to 24. They get... Oh. Okay. Um, we are not dead. We're not dead. All right, here we go. Come on. Ooh! She's back! It's time to boogie, baby! Grab me Kanan. Normal Rice Terrace Secure. Uh, we need the life points, hilariously. Double Kanan can boost? Yeah, but then we're just dead. <coughs> we need to not be dead to Seven's Road Magician, is the thing. If he was just a couple cards deeper, he wouldn't be able to activate the Seven's Road effect, because there's no cards in deck. As is, attacking Torna with Seven's Road currently doesn't win the game, which is where we want to be. So we know there's a Curry Bot in there. I'm trying to map out what the remaining cards are. What scares me is I think we're actually, we have one more Witch. One more Sevens Road, which is disastrous. Oh, don't do this to me. Thunder the Thunder. Okay, he's going for it, because at this point he'll draw the rest of his deck if he continues extending. So this is the kill turn. <clears throat> Pitch the last Curry Bot. We did know that. But down to 13. No shot. No, does he have every attribute? No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Please don't be calculating. If he has every attribute, Seven Sword goes to 39 and kills me exactly. Torm of the Windweaver is not lethal. Yes! Oh my god, we win! Vivon! Wait. Did he? Oh my god. <laughs> this is literally bogus. That was exact! Oh, this deck might not be very good. <laughs> All 
All right, we're going to call it there. This was a lot of fun. Thank you all for coming by. Sorry about no um no saga. Uh, ideally, we will be back next week. I am like 90% sure we'll be back next week. I'm going to throw you over to Golden Nova Yu-Gi-Oh. Tell him hi. He's chilling. He's having a good time. Um, I'll be back tomorrow, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And uh, we are going to be doing the huge. We're going to be trying to grind Master Duel as well. I'm going to see if we can think of some fun stuff to do on a Wednesday, though, because I, I do want to get something worth uploading. <laughs> okay. Bye-bye. Um, See ya.